All right, I'm listening. Hey, we are live. Yay, yay. Guys, we are live. And as you can see, I'm sitting on my couch because today I'm just going to sit back and listen. I'm going to sit back and by the grace of Jesus Christ, as the Lord Jesus fills this soldier with wisdom and knowledge from the Holy Spirit, I'm going to just listen. Let me put this on so you can guys see my head. You're in for a treat. You know why you're in for a treat? This is a brand new presentation, a brand new presentation that he developed on science and Islam. This is the first time he's presenting it. So, guys, you've been blessed. I'm blessed and honored by the grace of Jesus Christ that this warrior, and you know how I feel about him and everything I say is true. He's a warrior. He's a gem. Thank you for praying for him and some of you stepping up to support him. We need to get more people to support him for the work he's doing by the grace of Jesus Christ, for the glory of Jesus Christ. But guys, let me repeat again, because I'm going to hand it over to him. You're going to hear a brand new presentation. This is the first time he's presenting this new stuff on science in the Quran. He's done presentations on this before, but he created a new presentation, and we are honored to be the first, and it's going to be recorded. Invite people, be excited. Jesus Christ is Lord. Pray Jesus will now use him to get Muslims to see and leave Islam and follow with Jesus. So with that said, Usama, you warrior in Christ, take over, brother, in Jesus. Thank you so much, brother. And I want to introduce you to all you brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming As As you just said, this is my first time to do this presentation. So there may be some errors. Maybe some slides are not in the right place. Hey. Uh, there's always the first time for everything, and we make mistakes, and we learn from these mistakes. But I hope and I pray that people will be patient as they went through uh, this uh, seminar with me, uh, because trust me, it's fun. I'm really, I believe that this presentation will bring a smile, but a laughter, especially with our dear Muslim friends who maybe for the first time, they, they look at this. You know, Sam, uh, for years, I hear Muslims talk about the miracles of the Quran. And I say, for heaven's sake. Muhammad did not get anything right in the Quran. He will have miracles in the Quran. What, what would be better for him to put miracles in the Quran or for him to tell me at least the accurate information which he copied from the Bible? Doesn't make any sense. Besides all the errors we have in the Quran, if, if he really have miracles in the Quran, he should at least make less error uh, about whatever else he's talking about in the Quran. So, uh, with this being said, it is the, it is the first uh, miracle I'll be sharing with you about the stage of embryology, and uh, we will go from here to see where we go. Here we go. This is my beloved wife, Vicky. Vicky and I have been married now for 28 years. Keep us in your prayer and keep our son Caleb in your prayer because he needs to come back home for the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the first video which literally caught my attention about that professor from Canada or from America, world known professor. And I can tell you before we even start that video, that professor is the most ignorant, the most arrogant person I've ever seen in my life. I'm not kidding you. And he's, he's another, he's a doctor. He's teaching as a doctor. He have these degrees. I mean, for heaven's sake, he must be paid big, big, big bucks, or he must be so, so stupid. One of the two, he's been paid big bucks, or he's so stupid and he does not know what he's talking about. So without further ado, let's start our study by listening to the introduction for our program for tonight. The Quran on Embryology. Professor Keith Moore is one of the world's prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology, and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human, which has been translated into eight languages. The book is considered a scientific reference work and was chosen by the special committee in the United States as the best book authorized by one person. Hmm. Dr. Keith Moore is the Professor of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto in Toronto, Canada. In 1984, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. Man. He has directed 
many international associations, mm. such as the Canadian and American Association of Anatomists and the Council of the Union of Biological Sciences. Let's now listen to what Professor Keith Moore has to say about the revelations found in the Quran 1400 years ago and what science has only recently been able to find out through detailed investigation. Well, they make him so big. I mean, they give him all this reputation. It's a famous guy. It's great. I mean, whoa. We're talking about a guy. I, I, and I, I don't believe he ever believed in anything he said about the Quran because he knows nothing about Islam. He does not know the Arabic language. He does not know what the Quran is talking about. He just heard or he listened to the Muslims saying to him, say this, say that, and he just said whatever they said. By the way, he uh, was interviewed by other people later. They thought he maybe would convert to Islam. He never converted Islam. If what he teach about embryology in the Quran and the great miracle of Muhammad in the Quran concerning the stages of embryology, why he did not convert to Islam? Doesn't make any sense to me. Of course, he knew nothing about Muhammad nor God, Allah, the God of Muhammad, small g, nor the Quran, nor anything even he talking about. As we're going to share, as we're going to share this with you in our study. So let's move on to uh, what is uh, hermeneutics? Uh, hermeneutics is a very important word. So listen carefully, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about it. What is hermeneutics? The branch of knowledge that deals with interpretation, especially of the Bible or literary texts. Hermeneutics, how you interpret the scripture. How we interpret the Bible? Do Muslim people know anything about hermeneutics? I, I can tell you with all respect. In my two volume books, where I talk about the revelation of error, exposing the truth about the Quran, the revelation of error, available on our website and Amazon, I put there. These are not scholars. These are dumbers. Well, my editors told me, "You saw my dumbers? Not an English word." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "It's not an English word." I said, "It's already written in my book. We have to use it from now on." Yes, Muslim scholars are not scholars. They're dumbers. Can you imagine with me when you interpreted every almost almost every verse in the Quran? A Muslim so-called scholar interpreted or begins their interpretation by telling me, اختلف العلماء. اختلف المفسرون. Scholar disagree and, and, and the interpreter disagree. And they give you not one opinion, they give you five, ten opinions, and then they end it, Wallahu a'lam, and Allah knows best. Really? Is this a scholarly work? Is this how we can you call somebody like Al Tabari or Al Qurtubi or Al Jalalain or Ibn Kassir or, or any of these people? Can you call them scholars when they have no opinion and they have no clue what they're talking about? That's exactly. You know why? Because they never studied hermeneutics. They never studied hermeneutics. Let's move on to rules of interpretation. Rules of interpretation. One, what the prophet actually said. Which means you have to read whatever is written in the book which you're going to be interpreting. In the original language because believe it or not i can share with you hundreds of lies as we're going to see even today hundreds of lies given by those who are so-called scholars who translated the quran from arabic to english they actually did not translate it they fabricated new quran in english as we're going to give you some specific examples tonight all right so what the prophet said in his own language in his own culture setting that's very important let's move on number two what the prophet meant because sometimes the, the man or a woman say something and they mean two different things really yes indeed we're going to see some examples of tonight so allah told muhammad to write specific verses in the quran and it have two different meanings as a matter of fact as i said earlier sometimes muslim so-called scholars give us 10 different interpretations to the same sentence and they're not even close to each other they're the opposite i'm going to give you some direct examples from our study tonight number three three how the people at the time of the prophet actually understood it i think that's the best way to know what allah is telling muhammad and what muhammad meant by what he said why because how the people in muhammad days understood what muhammad said because now you're going to put the closeness in the place the closest in the time and the closest in the culture because there is no way muhammad said something and his Followers, his companions are close to him who knows about his life, who live with and walk with and talk with, who have the same culture setting, they will misunderstand what Muhammad said. Very, very important. We move on to number four. Four. 
how the people at the time of the prophet actually practiced it. If there was more than one meaning to that passage in the Quran or in the Bible, as a matter of fact, in any uh, uh, literal books, if there was more than one meaning for us today, we go back to say, how did the people un understand or practice that specific command? That will give you a better, clear understanding to what is the true hermeneutic, the true interpretation to whatever written in whatever book you're reading. Number five. Five. How does it apply to us today? Now we're going to move whatever is written, if it's written by Moses or it's written by Paul or it's written by Muhammad, from their culture setting to our culture, from their time to our time. And then we can put these verses or these commands or whatever we're reading to action. Yes, indeed. That includes even translating. If you're talking to uh, the people who Paul was talking to as a Greek or as a Hebrew, it's different than we talk to some other people, those who speak English. So we have to translate it accurately, and that does not exist in the Muslim translation. It exists in my translation of the Quran, the generous Quran, but it does not exist in other translations because they lie on purpose to cover up many of the errors and the mistakes which Muhammad Paul in in his writing of the Quran. These are very important five rules to understand the best way to uh, interpret any passage or any verse uh, in the Bible or in the Quran or any other book. Now, uh, Quran chapter 41, verse 53. As I give you uh, just an example, an example, how Muslim literally make up Quran for us in America in their interpretation. This is maybe uh, word for word my translation which we're using here tonight, maybe close to Yusuf Ali, close to Shakir, Bakhtala, Rashid, or somebody else. But how Muslim interpret that passage? Here, Quran 41, verse 53. We will show them our signs in the horizon and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. Is it not sufficient with your Lord that he is a witness over all things? Now, how Muslim scholar interpret that verse? Yes, indeed. There are two different interpretations I'm going to share with you. One is with Muslim scholars, those who know the Quran, those who understand Muhammad, who understand what Muhammad meant by these verses, as I'm going to share with you. And uh, American scholars, those who wear suits and ties, like my tie here tonight, and those who make up the honey out of the Quran. I don't understand how. They make miracles of the Quran. So they would tell you, Allah here is talking about miracles, the miracles in the horizon. Look at the sun, look at the moon, look at the star, look at all these great things in the horizon. That's exactly a great evidence of the truth of the Quran. How about in themselves? Not only the horizon, but also and in themselves. Look how you made. Look at your heart, look at your kidney, look at embryology and the stages which Allah mentions in the Quran concerning embryology. This is internal evidence to prove the truth of the word of Allah. Really? Is this the accurate interpretation to that verse? When some Muslim, when I meet with some Muslim and he gave me that interpretation to Quran 41, 53, I said, excuse me, excuse me. What scholar are you quoting here? What is your sources for this interpretation? Well, we all uh, uh, come up. No, 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 no. Give me the source. Is this has ever been given by Ibn Kasir or Tabri or Qurtub or Jalan or whatever? No. It is your personal opinion. It is how you want the Quran to say that's not an accurate interpretation. That's not hermeneutics. We call this propaganda, hogwash, but not interpretation, accurate interpretation. Now let me share with you the interpretation by uh, uh, Muslim scholars, okay? Here is, I'm quoting to you, Al-Tabari. Al-Tabari interpretation, and by the way, I can go on on and on that for hours, but I have already two hours study for us tonight, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go fast a little bit, so you need to listen a little bit faster as well, so we can finish this study on time. Now, here's the interpretation of the great Muslim scholar, Al-Tabari. Al-Sadi said, we will show them our signs in the horizon, meaning what we will invade for you, O Muhammad of the horizon, and of themselves, meaning in the people of Mecca, is Allah saying, we will invade Mecca for you. So the same verse, which Muslims are twisting to make it sound like the Quran is loaded with miracle concerning the horizon, uh, the, the horizon, the sun and the moon and the star, and the embryology and on and on. Was, it's actually telling us, that verse telling us that Muhammad was an invader. He was a savage man with a savage companion. That's how they made their living. Jesus worked as a carpenter, and his students and his disciples were fishermen, and some of them were doctors, like Luke, of course, he's a doctor, and some of them was philosopher and whatever. Now, what was the occupation of Muhammad and his companion? They were occupiers. 
They were invaders. And here's the word of Allah, prove it. That Allah will invade the world from Muhammad. Those who live far away and even Mecca itself. Allah will give Mecca to Muhammad. As Allah gave these 57 Muslim countries to his followers. How? By the age of the sword. Did Allah really give it to them? Or they took it by the age of the sword themselves? Hmm. But uh, this is just an example. How we can truly understand the Quran. How we can truly interpret the Quran accurately. You don't make up in, a new meaning for the verses of the Quran. But you go with what Muslim scholars said. That is if they're accurate. Because most likely they're not. Especially when you read 10 different opinions about the same verse. Well, let's move on with our study about the meaning of miracles and wonders. Uh, uh, that is the meaning of miracles and wonders, supernatural experiences. Something unusual, something beyond our simple understanding. A miracle is not uh, uh, something simple. Uh, well, I wake up this morning and uh, my wife made me a cup of coffee and I drink my cup of coffee and man, I have a great day. That was a miracle. That's not a miracle. That's a norm. That's what I've been in for the last whatever years I've been married to my wife. She make me cough and I drink it. But the miracle is something beyond the normal understanding. Something great is happening. And we're going to talk about it here from these very important steps. What is the evidence of a miracle? Here's the goal. Number one. One must be new knowledge. No one had ever spoken of it before. So if I go to our study tonight and I found that everything Muhammad is telling us, as we're going to see in the end of our study, was actually written material, existed for hundreds of years before Muhammad, some of them actually four, five hundred years before Christ. That is exactly 1100 years before Muhammad was a gleam in his father's eye. That's not a miracle. For Muhammad to write something was known for 1100 years, which is, by the way, an, an error. It's not even a fact that does not make the Quran present any miracle to us. That's not a miracle. I call this foolishness. I call it stupidity. Now let's move on to number two. Here we go. Two, the miraculous knowledge is impossible to determine by guessing or observation. What do you mean? Well, I can tell you there are plenty. Look for the word woman ayatihi and from his signs or from his miracle. All over the Quran, look for that word. You download my English translation of the Quran, just search for the in the square up in the right corner from his signs or from his miracle. And boy, oh boy, and from his miracle, what he sent the rain down and causes the grass to grow and the fruit to grow, and the fruit have different tastes. Are you kidding me, Muhammad? That's a miracle of Allah. Even atheists who don't believe in Allah, who don't believe in any God, they know that because that's something you observe every day in your life. We talked about uh, the miracles of Allah, how he moves the ships by the wind. Excuse me. That make Allah illiterate. Why? Because he does not know that in the future there will be angels to run these ships. You don't need the wind to move these huge ships uh, as you go on cruises and you see this, you know, 14, 15 story high ships. I mean, literally a mile long. Wind will not move. It will not even shake it. So these are not miracles. Things you see. Things, things you guess. Okay? When you guess about future winning, future war to win, that's not a miracle. That's not a revelation. That is not a prophecy. That's a joke. Because the chance for it to happen is 50-50. We can talk about that some other time in the future. The Lord's willing. Now, number three. Three. The miraculous knowledge must be given in absolute clarity. No guessing. No observation. It had to be very, very clear. When Jesus performed miracle and he raised the dead, that's not a guess. That is something that's not happening every day. You don't go to doctor every day with a dead patient and, oh, the doctor will touch the patient and he's dead and he come back to life. That's a miracle. Raising the dead is a miracle. The virgin birth of Christ is a miracle. Why? Because that's not the norm. That's not the usual. Virgins do not have babies. So this is the true understanding of miracle now we need to take these three steps here and move on with our study to see was muhammad really giving us any miraculous teaching in the quran about embryology the seven stages of embryology or the seven stages of the existence of man on earth okay let's move on to our verses for tonight that's quran chapter 23 verses 12 to 14.
It is the word of Allah, which Muslim dancing all over the West with it, as it is a miracle. And they're using, they're using Mr. Moore, Dr. Moore, to show you, here it is, an American, Canadian guy, who is uh, confessing about the miracle of the Quran concerning embryology. Lord have mercy. If that is a miracle, which make you, my dear Muslim friends, stay in Islam, this is the only study you will have. If you hear me go tonight, this will be the reason why you must leave Islam. And my heart and my prayer is not for you to leave Islam, become an atheist. Because believe me, when you die as an atheist, you're going to spend eternity in the same hell with Muhammad and the rest of the people of the world who refuse to have Christ as Lord and Savior. So my heart desire that I'm exposing falsehood in your Quran about the miracles of Muhammad. And guess what? From it, you need to go back to the Bible, to the true word of God, and get into a relationship with Christ. Because you're a sinful man like I, and without forgiveness of our sin, you and I will spend eternity in hell. So don't build your hope that Islam is true because of the miracle of the Quran. No, it's not a miracle. It's a stupidity. It's foolishness, as we're going to prove it tonight. So let's look at these three verses, uh, Quran chapter 23, verses 12 to 14. And indeed, we created the human from an extract of mud. Then we made him a nutfa in a secure place. Then we created the nutfa into a clot. So we created the clot into a piece of flesh. So we created the piece of flesh into bones. So we clothed the bones with flesh. Then we made it another creature. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. <laughs> Did you notice how the verse ended? Blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. I wonder how many creators out there. Allah, Ahsan al Is it true that Allah is the best creator? Because there are other creators who are not as good as Allah? This is a problem. You see, Muslims will read these verses. They will not even think. They will not ask a question because they're taught. Quran 5, 101, don't ask questions. Because guess what, my dear Muslim friend? If you ask questions, you become an infidel. So don't you dare ask any question. You're going to doubt the word of Allah. You're going to doubt this great miracle of Quran chapter 23, verses 12 to 14. But trust me, there's no miracle here. There's foolishness here, as we're going to see together tonight. Um, Let's move on to uh, the stage number one. As I shared with you, there are seven stages. Stage number one, Dr. Moore did not talk about, Professor Moore did not talk about, uh, I don't know, because he maybe does not believe in creation. He said he's a Christian. I don't know what kind of Christian he is. He does not know the difference between Allah and God. He does not know the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. Anyway, stage number one, which is Quran chapter 23, verse 12. And indeed, we created the human from an extract of mud. Extract of mud. That's how Allah created Adam. Is this what the Bible said? No, we're going to read the Bible in a minute. But is this true? No. Why? Because a little bit later, as we continue to look at other verses of the Quran, we see that Allah actually used different material to create Adam with. So not only the Bible, the, the Quran is contradicting the Bible, the Quran is contradicting the Quran. I'm not going to make a big deal about it because that's not our study for tonight. But Let's look at some other verses in the Quran concerning the creation of Adam. Quran 55, 14. Allah said, He created the human from clay like the fakhar. What is fakhar? Non-Arabic word in the Quran from a Syriac origin, which means uh, potter's clay. Oh, so a little bit ago, he gave us different materials than what we have. Now, how about this next verse comparing to 15, 28? And when your Lord said to the angels, Surely I am creating a human from dry mud, from black molded mud. Is it clay or it is black molded mud? What material did Allah use to create Adam with? Keep going. How about this verse, 32.7? Who best created everything? And he began the creation of the human from mud. Oh, just mud. It's not actually black molded mud. How about Quran 37 verse 11? So consult with them. Are they strong creatures or who created us? Surely we created them from sticky mud. Oh, it's a sticky mud. And it's so amazing when you read the hadith, the saying of Muhammad, which is the second source of the Muslim scholar's knowledge, he would tell you that Allah sent three angels to earth. And the first angel came, uh, was uh, angel Gabriel. The earth spoke. Use your imagination. The earth opened its mouth and spoke. And the earth told him, don't take any dirt out of me. Don't shame me. So angel Gabriel went to Allah empty-handed or empty wings. As Muslim claim, he have wings. Then Allah sent the second angel, angel Michael, Michael. Same thing happened. Then Allah sent the third angel, the angel of death. 
And when the earth spoke and said, don't take dirt out of me. And he said, and I cannot disobey Allah. I cannot go back to the heavens of Allah without dirt. So he grabbed three pile of dirt, red, white, and black. And Allah mixed them together to create Adam. And behold, now we got white people, black people, red people. The Quran is right scientifically. Islam is right scientifically. Muhammad is a prophet. Huh, really? You know how tall Adam when Allah made him? Uh, 60 cubit, 90 feet tall or 90 feet long. That's like a 10, 11 story high building. Uh, hello, my dear Muslim friends. You really believe Allah created Adam? From the clay or mud or fakhar, whatever material he's using. And he was literally 90 feet tall. And the story of the hadith go long, long, long. We don't have time for it. We'll stop here. Let's move on with our study. What does the Bible say about the creation of Adam? Okay. Here's Genesis account. Chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So Adam was created from what? From dust. God made Adam from dust. God made him by his hand. He breathed the breath of life in Adam. By the way, we'll talk about the breath of life a little bit later. Muhammad also copies the same idea in the Quran and in the Hadith. Now, let's continue with Dr. Moore, Professor Moore, the man who discovers these great miracles concerning in biology in the Quran. Here we go. In the 1940s, uh, Professor Streeter of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology in Washington, D.C., proposed a system for classifying the stages of human development. His system arranged human embryos in 23 numbered sta stages based on their difference, differences in appearance. The Carnegie system of classification was used around the world until the 1970s when a more refined system was proposed by Dr. Ronan O'Reilly of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology, now in San Diego, California. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the seventh century AD. Although Aristotle, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the fourth century BC. He did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the seventh, seventh century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific training. So uh, Dr. Moore has already come to the conclusion before we get to our study that there is no way, there is no way Muhammad was able to come up with this knowledge. He's, he, was, he was illiterate. He cannot read and write. You know what I believe? He could not come up with this knowledge about the embryology 700 years after Christ uh, uh, because uh, unless it's given to him by Allah as a revelation, by God as a revelation. And I believe and not, not only Muhammad was ignorant of these facts, but himself, Dr. Moore, Professor Moore here, he himself is an ignorant man. Or as I said earlier, he must be paid big, big, big bucks. I don't know how many millions he gave him to look at uh, this might talk to this mic and look at the camera and say all these lies about that subject of our for tonight. All right, so uh, let's go to stage number two. Stage number one, he did not talk about, which is the creation of Adam from whatever material Allah used. And uh, he obviously, Professor Moore, does not know that Adam was a 90 feet tall. I mean, that's big. And Muhammad told them from the days of Muhammad until today, people are getting shorter. According to Muhammad, we should be today, where's what, maybe uh, four inches height? Because we're supposed to get shorter. Anyway, let's go to stage two. And that is Quran chapter 23, verse 13. Then we made him a nukba in a secure place. We made him, human, men, women, a nukba. And where is a nukba? Insecure place. Now, when you read this word, nukba, insecure place, what do you think, Dr. Moore, or Professor Moore would tell us, he will, he will tell us, 
it is talking about not thought, of course, it is the sperm and the eggs and secure place is a womb, the mother womb. Makes sense. How did Muhammad know that? Wow. That's a miracle. Now, let's move on to Professor Moore himself. The first uh, stage is ad ad adapt. And you'll have to apologize my, for my pronunciation. Uh, this is from Surah uh, Tariq 6. A deck. I have no idea. What is a deck? Maybe if I if I'm him, I should not say one word in Arabic and let somebody come and say adek. And I, I don't know what adek is. And I'm not learning Arabic. Arabic is my mother tongue language. I, I speak it. Okay. If you, if you have a hard time to understand my English, because English is not my second, my third, my first language, my second language. If you have met with me a few years ago, I was able to speak to you in French, but as an Arabic and English. But here I am speaking English to you. So he said adek. What adek? I have no idea. So let's move on. We'll go back to his video to see what he's talking about. Here's the verse of the Quran, and that's obviously Quran chapter uh, chapter 46. I can't even read verses. Uh, oh, we will get it in, in my English translation. It'll be a little bit better. I can't read the slide here. He is created from a drop. 86. This Arabic term refers to the forceful emission of fluids, which occurs during ejaculation in the male and ovulation in the female. The male secretions, called semen, contain the spermatozoa, and the female secretions, called follicular fluid, contain the ova. This is the stage of fertilization and the uh, nutva, and after the, this is what we call the zygote, referred to in the Quran as the nutva, and the nutva undergoes uh, division, which we call cleavage, as it passes down the uterine tube. So these are the stages of the nutva here as it undergoes uh, cell division. Um, it is, this term is used several times in the Quran when referring to the beginning of development. After examining all these references, it is concluded that nutva re refers to the small drop of fluid containing the sperm and the ovum. The term nutva is also used to refer to the dividing zygote as it undergoes cleavage, cell division, and passes along the uterine tube to enter the uterus. This surah says, then he made his progeny from a quintessence of the nature of fluid despised. Sulala is an Arabic term, refers to the gentle extraction of the germ or sex cells from the millions that are uh, produced. There are 300 to 500 million sperms in the ejaculate of a healthy young male. Only one of these is extracted from the semen to fertilize the ovum. This shows a, a photograph of the millions of sperm uh, when they are ejaculated and only one of the several million sperms are, is drawn out, which is what is suggested by the word uh, sulala. Now the same in the case of the uh, ovary, uh, uh, only one ovum reaches maturity and is expelled from the ovary, and it is extracted from the many thousands that are available in the ovary. Again, the idea of extraction or sulala. Wow, sulala. Does Dr. Moore have a clue what he's talking about? No. What is not fun? It's the sperm and the ovum, the egg. And he's using science to interpret a verse in the Quran, to interpret word in the Quran. He does not even know how to pronounce. He does not know what the word natva is and what the word salala is. He's quoting verses from the Quran and he has no idea what he's talking about. I wish he was able to get my copy of the Quran in English so he can really find the real meaning for these words. Because natva have nothing to do with sperm and eggs, but it's something completely different. Well, Quran chapter 86, verses 5 and 7, that's the verse he was quoting earlier. So here's what Allah said in these two verses, or three verses. So let the human look to what he was created from. He was created from gushing water. It comes out from the backbones and the breasts. Why Professor Moore did not read verse 7? 
they gave him to read the Muslim who invited him for this conference they gave him verses five and six and they skipped seven why not what's wrong with the word of Allah in verse seven and I love it how when we quote any subject about any matter in the Quran Mosley you're taking the verse out of context that's not the end of the verse no that was the end of the verse this was the end of the story but they always accusing us of taking verses like cherry picking out of context. No, they do that. We don't do that. Me, Sam, David, anybody who speak about Islam, what verse is here? We don't take verse out. There's enough errors. There's enough garbage in Allah's word and Muhammad saying in the hadith. I don't have to take anything out of context. Just keep it as it is. So what we have here? So let the human look to what he was created from. He was created from gushing water. Gushing water. Not egg and sperm. And then he said, it comes out from the backbones and the breasts. The backbone is the man and the breast of the woman. Here's the water. Two different waters. The white and the yellow. The soft and the hard ones. <laughs> really? Wait, wait, wait. We're, we're just warming up. We're just warming up. What does the word not for mean? Because Professor uh, 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 Mori here told us not for is the eggs and the, the sperm. Nope. Let's go to what Muslim scholar really says about it. Let's look, go to the English, the Arabic dictionary. We we'll learn from their own uh, tongue what the word not for meant to Muhammad. To the early companions, to the Muslim people in the last 14 years, until we come to such uh, Professor Moore with a new interpretation for the word not. It is the word not. From the tongue of Arab, chapter of Nun, Nutfa is a little water or lots of water, but it's specifically given to little water. Do you now know how stupid Muslim scholars are? Nafa is little water or lots of water, a one drop in a bucket or the ocean. Both of them are not fun. This is the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life. When a meaning of a word can be the opposite. What is hungry? I mean, I, my stomach is empty or I'm full to the I can't breathe, man. I ate too much with Sam Shamon. He gave me too much food. I can't breathe. Or I have nothing in my stomach. Both of them is the word hungry. No. Hungry means you have no food, means you're starving. No food. You want to eat. It cannot be full and empty stomach. It cannot. But that's how Muslim scholars are. That's why I call them dumbers. They're not scholars. All right? Let's move on to Quran chapter 75, verses 57 to 39. And we read, Was he not a nutfa? Money emitted forth. Then he was a clot. So he was created. So he was fashioned. So he made from him the two pairs, the male and the female. Two bears? <laughs> Four people? Two bears? One pair and one pair? Two bears? By the way, this it's my 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 angel session is the only one where you see these errors. And when like after I put it down, my editors work with me and my translation said, What do you mean two bears? You mean a male and female? One bear? I said, No, two bears. I said, Why? I said, That's what Allah said. That's why. So they want to correct it. This is they want to say, so he made from him the male and the female. He said, What do you need the two bears? I said, because Allah said so. We don't fix the Quran when we translate it from Arabic to English. We translate it with every error in it. So this is a little bit about the many, how Allah created a, a, a human uh, through the many, which is admitted inside the uh, to create the, the man and the the, man, the the baby from the man and woman. All right. What the Muslim scholars? Uh, okay. What do Muslim scholars say about this passage? The passage we just read. Listen carefully to Al Qurtubi. Al Qurtubi, one of the great uh, Muslim scholars, and he said, according to Al Qurtubi, Nutfa is a little water when it is dropped, and it comes from the backbones of men and the breasts of the women. Once again. Like the word of Allah in the Quran, here is the great Muslim scholar Al Qurtubi is telling us. Natva is a little water. Come from two places the man back bones and the woman chest. I'm going to tell you the bones of her chest until her breast. Okay, let's move on to Arazi. The human was created first from clay, then he made him after that Natva in the back bones of the father. 
so it was emitted from the backbone to the womb of the woman when they made love. And the womb became a secure place for this nut farm. Oh, now we learn about what secure place. So not far, ladies and gentlemen, too fluid. Man, backbones, woman, the breast or the chest. And they go together in the womb, the secure place. What a great sign. What a great miracle. I'm wondering when my friend Sam will see the Shahada so we can learn to make a good Muslim Imam out of him. It's a joke. It's a joke. Let's continue. Not the not far of uh, Professor Moore, the not far of Allah, the not far of Muslim scholars, the not far of Muhammad. They used Mr. Moore as a useful idiot. Unless he made some good money, he used them uh, also make some money out of them. But if he did it for free, that means he was used as a useful idiot. Let's move on. Move on. Natva and Shash. What is Natva and Shash? That is mingled water. Listen to Professor Moore and we'll go on with our study. The next stage is Amshaj. Amshaj Surah Ad Dair 2. Verily, we recreated man of a mixture of a germinal drop. Amshaj, then it's an Arabic term, is used in the Quran to describe the mixing of the sperms and the ovum during fertilization. Uh, the ovum rotates, rotates within the fluid. Once again, Amshaj is a mix between the sperm and the eggs, the sperm and the ovum. That is a lie from the bottom of hell. Why? Because there is no ovum. Muhammad knows nothing about ovum. Muslim scholars know nothing about ovum. They know about two fluids. Man backbone fluid, the white one, and the yellow fluid which comes from the woman's breast. Who's telling the truth now? Let's continue. Let's continue with Professor Moore. Containing the sperms until one of them is successful in penetrating its covering layers, which we call the corona radiata and the zona pellucida, which is this layer here. Yeah, I'll read it again in English. Uh, it's Surah Abasa 19. He created a new individual from Nutfa and immediately planned and programmed him. That was the first one we had. Oh, there it is. Uh, so Al Kelk then is an Arabic term which means coming into being and is used when referring to the fertilized ovum or zygote. Here you can see the uh, nuclei from the sperm and the ovum uniting to form a new cell which is the zygote or nutfa and uh, then uh, here's the zygote or nutfa again but it's just getting ready to divide into two cells which we call the dividing zygote or the dividing nutfa wow what a great professor and he explained to me the quran concerning the words nutfa and shash this is the professor was used by the Muslim as useful idiot to deceive the Muslims of the Middle East and the rest of the world. Not for Amshesh. It's an egg and a sperm and the continue of the growth of the baby inside the mother womb in the secure place. Now, what does the words not for Amshesh mean linguistically? Now, now I'm going to teach you right now what does the word not? We heard the propaganda, the hogwash Islam from Professor Moore. Now let's go to the Arabic language. The word amshaj is ikhlat, mixing. When I say mashash to haza bihaza means khalatu. When they say that I mashash this with that, meaning I mix them together. Mixing two fluid is not for amshaj. Mixing the white sperm for which come from the back of the man bone and the yellow fluid which come from the womb breast inside the uh, uh, the, the, the the womb that is not for Amshash, not what Professor Moore has told us. He's lying, or he's really is duped. They told him to say that, and he said it. Now let's move on to Quran chapter seventy-six, verse two. It is the word of Allah. Surely we created the human from Nutfa Amshash. We test him, so we made him hearing, seeing. Yes, the word Amshaj is another problem for Muhammad. He's using non-Arabic words all over the Quran. You get my copy, my translation of the Quran, you see all these words. The words are not Arabic, and I doubt even Egyptian, in e the Arab in Egypt, the Arab in many of the Muslim uh, countries in the Middle East, the Arabs, 
do not know what the word I'm sharing is. When you tell the Muslim that there is a word in the Quran that's not, it's not an Arabic language. Oh, astaghfirullah, I seek refuge of Allah. And like somebody have sinned against Allah and against Muhammad to say that there is a word in the Quran is not an Arabic word. We got hundreds of them. Then he has the most, okay, what I'm sharing mean? Oh, Allah, Allah, only Allah knows. You don't know if the word I'm telling you, you don't know the meaning of the word, but at the same time you argue with me, that's not an Arabic. It's not an Arabic. Why? Because actually it is a Syriac word. And which means what? Mixed. Mixed water. Okay. Let's read Akrama interpretation. What not Fahim Shash mean, Mr. Akrama? We're talking about Muslim scholar, not the useful idiot, Moran, uh, uh, Mori, but the real Muslim scholars. Not Fahim Shaja is the water of man mixed with the water of woman. Oh, two water. Oh, here it is. Two waters. Let's see somebody else. Maybe maybe that guy did not know. Maybe uh, somebody else, a dictionary, have a, a better interpretation, a different meaning for the word, not for Amshaj. From the dictionary of Mohit, Amshaja means mingled or mixed, as it is in the case of mixing colors. Yeah. You mix two colors together, you come up with new color. Yellow, blue, give us green. Red, black, give us brown. That is mixing. Not for Amshash. All right. Let's see the interpretation of Al-Tabri. He knows better than any Muslim living in the world today. After all, he's a great Muslim scholar. And his saying, we created the human from Natfa Amshash. Allah mentioned we created the descendants of Adam from Natfa, meaning from the water of the man and the water of the woman. Hello, two waters. Ibn Abbas, the first cousin of Muhammad. He knows better. See, now, now we're talking about hermeneutics. We go back all the way to Muhammad time, Muhammad companion, Muhammad first cousin. Tell us, Ibn Abbas. States that the water of the woman and the water of the man mix together. I think we got it. I think I understand now. I understand Professor Moore is moron, and the Muslims in the West are lying to deceive the people of the West about the miracles of the Quran. And sadly, they are using the same lies to deceive the ignorant Muslims who live in the Muslim world. Right and left. Okay, let's move on with our study. When the water of the man gathered with the water of the woman, it is Amshar. Thanks for Al Arabi. He tell us another interpretation. Now let's go to Musnad Ahmed. Musnad Ahmed will give us a true hadith, a true story. From which we can learn about not fam charge and about the creation and uh, i'm thankful to god for the technology we have today can you imagine without computer how in the world i can get this material in the arabic language and i can translate it to english hmm. saudi arabia made a big mistake they created their website and they put their material their information their knowledge online for us to use it to destroy islam that's exactly and I'm thankful to God that the Lord made them rich and made them do all this work for us. I mean, we're literally taking the food that's already cooked. We're just eating it. All what I did, I went online, get the Arabic material, translated to English, and here it is. The whole world can learn, including the 87% of the Muslims who do not know Arabic. And my prayer, once again, you as a Muslim, hear this message. Hear it again, watch it again, watch it again, take notes, investigate, investigate everything come out of these lips. If we're lying, tell us you're wrong. If we're telling the truth, well, praise God, get out of that savage cult and come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. You save not only yourself, but even your children. Break the chain. Set yourself free and your children after you. A Jewish man was walking by the messenger of Allah while he was talking with his companions. So the Qureshi said, O oh Jew, surely this Muhammad claims to be a prophet. So the Jew said, surely I will ask him about something no one will know except the prophet. He said, O oh Muhammad, from what was man created? You know, the hadith is a joke. The story is a ridiculous. Why? He's asking Muhammad a question and only the prophet knows the answer. He did not say only the prophet and I know the answers. Only prophet knows the answer. What if Muhammad made up any answer? A false answer. Huh, you see my point? But let's continue with the hadith. Muhammad said, O oh, you Jew, all created from the man's nutfa and the woman's nutfa. As for the man's nutfa, it is thick, and from it the bones and the muscles. As for the woman's nutfa, 
it is soft, and from it the flesh and the blood. So the Jewish men said, like that it was said before. In other words, nothing new. But if everybody knows, it, why is asking the question? What is the point to make this story? And the funny thing is the story still exists in Muslim books. That's what I got it from, from Muslim Ahmed. Is this really the best Muslim can give to us? And notice the answer of Muhammad. Not for of man, not for woman. The water of man, the water of woman. And here we learn something new, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. The not for of man, the water of man is thick. But the not for of the woman, it's, uh, and from it, because it's thick, it's a little bit heavier, you know, it comes the bones and the muscles. And the not for the woman is what? It's soft. From it, the flesh and the blood. What science is that? That from the sperm, the muscles and the bones came come to a new babies, and from the fluid which come from the woman, we're gonna find out later to be yellow, the soft one, the flesh and the blood. Can we learn that in our schools in America? I know Joe Biden said a few days ago he wished we can teach about Islam in our schools. Hey, praise God! I'm glad he's willing to do that. Can I teach in our public school for free? I don't want any money. If you would give me 10 schools, I can use internet like that, and I can speak to all the schools in America, all the universities in America. I will travel from one state to another for free, and I can do online teaching about Islam for free. As you're going to hear, Mr. Moore himself, he will advise us in the end of this program that this should be taught in school. Well, praise God. I would love to teach this in our school to see how far we're going to go with that. Hmm. Let's move on to Professor Moore as he continue to make no sense or make full of himself and of science. The next stage, El Tekdir, which is the same verse that it was just repeated. Did you hear the word he said? Al Tekdir, Al Tekdir, Al Tekdir. I have no idea what he said. I mean, literally, if somebody can translate to me his Arabic so I can understand from Arabic to Arabic, help me out here. If somebody scholar out there who knows Arabic, I can't. The video is bad. If the quality is poor, the sound is bad, and I have no idea, and he does not speak Arabic, so good luck to figure out what he's saying. But let's move on with that uh, next stage, very important. This Arabic term means the determination of characters, and appears to refer to the fact that from the beginning, the zygote, or nutfa, contains genetic factors in the chromosome, contain the genes, which determine the color of the future person's eyes, hair. Not serious, the video was cut. So he was he was doing something and they cut and they come back and it's like it remind me of the Quran. That's how the Quran was put for us to read even today, according to Muslim scholars. For example, Quran chapter 33 it used to be as big as chapter two, and we lost half of it. Says who? Not you, Sam Adakdar, not Sam Shamoon, or some of us who are ministering to you. No, Muslim scholars are telling us half of chapter 33 is gone. As a matter of fact, there used to be a full copy in in, in Aisha's bedroom and some dag in some goat or some sheep ate it they ate allah's word was eaten and we lost half of it and what we got today is less than half so now that guy is talking and they cut him edit his work i have no idea what he said of course i don't have the original video so we're going to work with the miracle of uh, mr mori as we have so far but let's continue let's continue and skin and all its other characteristics such as the appearance of the face and the body El Harth, uh, Surah El Nagara, Ayah 223. Your wives are as a tilt unto you. This Arabic term refers to the plowing of the earth and the sowing of the seed in it. This term is used in reference to sexual intercourse, plowing, and implantation of the blastocyst, sowing of the seed. This analogy is a very good one since the blastocyst develops root like structures called chorionic villi, which derive oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood, just as the roots of the plant, go on here, uh, derive their nutrients from the soil. Wow. Wow and wow. Now we know for sure, ladies and gentlemen, that we got truth in the Islam and the Quran, the word of Allah. We got science. I'm not going to go too much about that verse, Quran chapter 2, verse 223, because you can literally, I can read to you some of the Arabic translation, uh, the interpretation of that verse, and it's garbage. 
It's garbage. But here's the word of Allah in Quran chapter 2, verse 223. Your women are a field to you. So enter your field as you please and send beforehand good for yourselves and fear Allah and know that you will meet him and give the good news to the believers. From that verse, Professor Moore found out the miracle of Allah's word in the Quran. As uh, we put the seed in the earth and the uh, seed grow to be plants on be trees. So a man put his water, which come from the backbone, <laughs> and mixed with uh, water, which come from the woman breast, the white and yellow, the thick and the soft, and they go in a secure place. And the mother, through the blood, will feed that uh, mingled liquid, the mingled waters. And here we go, the baby is growing. It's foolish. It's actually foolish if we think about how he can teach this hogwash propaganda about in biology grows by these verses by the way the ungodly thing about that verse and if you have children you should let them go for a minute here they don't want to hear what i'm about to say anything under 18 or 20 depending on the rules you have in your home um here i can speak now if you have children let them go Okay, uh, that verse is interpreted by some Muslim scholars to say that you can have sexual relationship with your women in the normal way or the abnormal way, which means through the rectum. I, it's written in their own. I mean, the scholar have given you different to interpretation. One of them is this, what I just said. Let's move on with our study. Uh, Sahih Muslim, Sahih Muslim and Aisha. Aisha is a, a strong hadith, strong source. If Aisha said it, it's true. It's really true. She talked like Muhammad. They both never lied. Aisha said, a woman asked Muhammad, will a woman wash if she has an orgasm in her sleep and she saw the water? He said, yes. So Aisha said to her, shame on you. Then Aisha said that Muhammad said, let her. Was the resemblance of the children except from that if the water of the woman came above the water of the man, the child will have the resemblance of her brothers? And if the water of the man came above the water of the woman, the child will resemble the uncles, the brothers of the father. And what's amazing, Muslim will tell you, how did Muhammad know that 1,400 years ago, unless he's a true prophet? Wow. Chris Aisha was right. Shame on a female to talk to a man. I don't care if a prophet or about these issues. I could not talk about that in the Arabic language in front of my mama. She was slapping my face. Shame on you, son. Yes, shame on that woman. But Muhammad loved to talk about sex. I mean, he takes sex out of the Quran. He takes sex out of the Hadith. There's nothing left. There's nothing left there. So where does the resemblance come from? The baby will look like her mother's brothers if the man produced his fluid first, which comes from the backbone, and then the woman will produce her fluid after his fluid. Now, the boy will look like the father or his his uncle if the woman produced her fluid first and then the fluid, which come from the breast, by the way, and the fluid of the man come over it. Wow. What a great science. Professor Moore, you missed so much information you should share with all these doctors and this great audience you're speaking to in this conference. Hmm. Hmm. Scientific errors in stage two. We got, we got plenty. I'm going to share with you some. Okay. Here we go. Pregnancy. One, pregnancy does not occur from the mixing of man's water and the woman's water. Now, that's that's a fact. Okay, let's move on. Stage two, error number two. The messenger of Allah, and he is the honest who is worthy to be trusted, said, surely your creation gathered in his mother's abdomen area 40 days. Then he becomes a clot likewise 40 days. Then he becomes a piece of flesh likewise 40 days. Then the angels will be sent to breathe in him the spirit. Ooh, yeah! Now we got some real science. Facts, numbers. 40 days, 40 days, 40 days, spirit show up. 40 days as Natfa, 40 days as Alqa, 40 days as Madha, and the spirit will show up. Can you imagine with me? This is not made up, guys. This is science. Of Allah, the signs of Muhammad. I'm wondering why Arab, why Muslim drink camel urine? Because they follow the same guy who's teaching this hogwash embryology. 40 days, not far. The water mixed together, 
40 days. Nothing change is the same for 40 days. And then we wait another 40 days that Nafa will change to Alka, and then the Alka will change to Madra. We're going to talk about Alka and Madra. These are the next stages. So calm down. I know it. You don't know what I'm saying here. You'll learn. Just give me a few minutes. Okay? 40 days for the first stage. Did Professor Moore know that? Did he believe that Muhammad is a true prophet and Allah is the source of his knowledge in the Quran concerning the first stage of the Nafa? 40 days? Two liquid inside the secure place? 40 days? Huh. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about uh, two weeks. I believe two weeks. That picture, if I'm wrong, I correct the information. I believe two weeks. I don't have the info right now in front of me. Somehow it's hidden in the bottom of the slide. But two weeks. That is what we got. Not not fun. Not too fluid. Not not fun. Shash. Too mixed fluid inside the womb. Here we go. Two weeks. That's a real picture taken inside the mother womb. All right. Let's move on. Two. Mohammed made an error when he said the range of this stage of embryonic development. 40 days. That's a big boo boo. Kiss Muhammad prophecy goodbye. Kiss the miracle of the Quran goodbye. It's not there anymore. Find me a doctor with logic and common sense. Some person who knows what he's talking about to tell me that the two waters, the one comes the backbone of the man and the woman of the, the breast of the woman or the chest of the woman of her bone, and these two liquid uh, be mixed together inside the woman womb for 40 days. No change whatsoever. Error number three. Anna states that Abdullah ibn Salim found out that Muhammad was coming to the city, so he came and met with him. And he said, I have three questions for you. No one knows the answers except the Prophet. What is the description of the hour? And what is the first food the people of the garden will eat? And what will a child extract from his father? And what does he extract from the uncle of his mother's side? Well, forget about the uh, the hours, the day of judgment. But well, forget about the foods you eat in the garden, which is not our topic. We can cover this some other time in the future. Let's talk about uh, what the baby extract from the father or from the uncle of the mother and what they extract from the father. Okay. All right. This, here we go. Listen to the rest of the story. Mohammed said, as for the resemblance of the child, so it is if the water of the man comes to the woman, before her water, the child will resemble the father. If her water comes before him, the resemblance of the child will be like her. Then the man said, Surely I bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, I bear witness. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. The guy became a Muslim on the spot, just like that. Why? Because he got the right answer. The child come from the two waters. And if the water of the man came on the top of the water of the woman, the boy, the, the child, would be like his daddy. If the water of the woman came in the top of the water of the man, same thing we said earlier, it's different source here, that the, the child would look like her family, her, his uncle from her mother's side, from his mother's side. And he became a Muslim. That show you the stage, what kind of people believed in Muhammad in the 7th century? Bunch of ignorant, bunch of stupid, some bunch of illiterate. That's what they are. He said the Shahada. He became a Muslim because he heard a nonsense, a lie. Let's move on. Let's move on with our study. Three. Three. Muhammad made an error when he described where the baby receives their physical traits from. So that's what we just covered. The resemblance from the father to the mother's side have nothing to do with science. That's not a miracle. That's a joke. Okay, here we go. قال ما الرجل أبيض وما المرأة أصفر فإذا شمع فعلى من الرجل من المرأة أذكر بإذن الله وإذا على من المرأة من الرجل أنثى بإذن الله قال يهود. All right. Ah, uh, this is of course Arabic. Uh, you cannot read it. It's an old piece of fabric. I love it. I will not change it. I'm not anything. But here is the English for what we have said. That's the fourth error in stage number two. A Jewish man said, "I came to ask you concerning the child." Muhammad said, the water of the man is white, and the water of the woman is yellow. If the two waters are mixed, so the water of the man covers the water of the woman, and the child is a male, by the permission of Allah. And if the water of the woman covers the water of the man, 
it becomes a female by the permission of Allah. Not only is the resemblance come from these two water, the sex of the baby come out of the two waters. Allah Akbar. I mean, there must be somebody seeking the truth to become Muslim tonight. Somebody have some knowledge, uh, did not have the knowledge, and now we share the knowledge. He or she we could literally, like this Jewish man did, they should also become Muslim. A white is the male, the yellow is the female. That's the fluid. Now, if the white fluid covers the yellow fluid, it's a boy. Boy. Now, if the yellow fluid comes at the top of the white, a girl. Tell this to them. Thousands of ladies who got divorced or their husband married somebody else over them because they could not produce a baby boy. I mean, where we come from, a boy is everything. You can have 10,000 girls, okay? If you don't have one male, you're nothing. When you die, you're dead. But if you have one boy, you live forever. Okay? So it's very important. That's why you see Muslim men having the second, third, and fourth. Why? Because their wife could not produce a baby boy. Because the baby comes from two fluids. Depend who cover who. The white covers the yellow or the yellow covers the white. Allah Akbar. Science. Miracle of Allah. The miracle of Muhammad. The miracle of the Quran. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Fourth error. The Jewish man said, you have told the truth. Yes. Surely you are a prophet. Amen. And then he left. So the messenger of Allah said, mm. that man asked me about something I did not know. Yeah. But Allah came to me with the answer. Three facts here. Number one, Muhammad is a humble guy. He says he did not know the answer. Number two, the Jewish man is stupid. He became Muslim because he heard the lie. Number four, Allah is ignorant. Allah himself is wrong. Not only Muhammad does not know, Allah himself is telling Muhammad false information. That is the God whom the Muslim worship. Allah, ignorant of embryology. The owner of the word of Allah in the Quran, the source of the word of Allah in the Quran is ignorancy. Muhammad is ignorant and so is Allah. It's God. Allah told Muhammad that. And Muslims believe in that. I wonder why millions are leaving Islam and becoming atheists. Maybe that's a good reason. Now I pray and I cry out to God tonight or whatever time you're watching this program that you will examine these truths and stop being a Muslim and don't be fooled to die as an, an atheist or agnostic and spend eternity in hell. But come to Jesus. Come to know the truth of the loving God who loves you so much. That Allah hate Jesus. That Allah hate God. That Allah is the devil. Who deceived millions of Muslims, but 1.7 billion today in the world are believing in this man to be a prophet and in his Allah to be God, and here it is. We examine them, they're empty, they have no weight whatsoever. Let's move on. Let's move on with this is the fourth error, of course, which we covered. Four Muhammad made an error regarding how the sex of a baby is determined. We're gonna share with you that true science how the sex of the baby is determined, not the science of Allah and Muhammad, but the science, the real science, which we can examine, which we can approve every day in our life today. The science, the, uh, the, the true science of the sex of the baby. Here we go. What do we have here? The 23 chromosomes, the 23 pairs of chromosomes. See, every baby will have 46 chromosomes in him. He get 23 from the daddy, and 23 from the mama. Now, it just happened that the mama, if you look here, I don't know if you can see mama's, here's this, the, this chromosome X come from the mama. Now, the daddy can give Y or X. Mama can only give X's, daddy can give X or Y. Here we go, watch this. X from the father and X from the mother give double x that's a female baby girl y from the papa from the dad x from the mom x y that give us a baby boy dad can give x or y mom can only give x's x only come from mama which is the source of the female and the dad can give an x or a y wow muhammad was wrong allah was wrong Professor Moore is so stupid, so ignorant, he does not even know what he's talking about. He's defending a false prophet, and he's defending the devil. 
call him God. Let's move on. Let's move on with our study. When is the sex of the baby determined? We already heard. When a man make love to the woman, now you see uh, if his white fluid cover her yellow fluid, it's a boy. If her yellow fluid cover his white fluid, it's a girl. So when the sex is determined, obviously at the time of conception. When a man make love to his wife, in the case of Islam, to his woman. I'll move on with our study. If the nutta continued for 42 nights, Allah will send to it an angel, so he will shape it and will create its hearing and its sight and its skin and its flesh and its bones. Then he will say, O oh Lord, will it be a male or female? Then your Lord will decide what he will. By the way, you're going to hear the same story later with different numbers. Because Muhammad could not remember what he said in the Quran, and his scholars who was collecting his saying could not remember what he said in the hadith. So let me know. Here, 42 nights. So a man make love to his wife in October. Now we are in, uh, in September. Now we're in October. October 1 November, a month and 10 days later. The angel comes. And by the way, it's very clear. The angel go inside the mother womb. Not from outside. He literally go inside, okay? With a scroll in his hand. We're going to read this again and again tonight. And he will write down everything. Here we go. He will ask Allah, Allah, oh, what do you want this to be? Allah will not say, hey, man, that was determined 40 days, 42 days ago because when he had sex with her, her yellow, his yellow, uh, his white cover, her yellow, it's a boy. Or her yellow cover, his white fluid, it's a girl. No, 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 no. Allah will tell him then. So now ask a question. When the sex of the baby is determined, at the time of conception or 42 days later, or actually 120 days later, another hadith, we're going to read in a minute. It's a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Huh. And, and who's telling us? Sahih Muslim. The correct hadith, the correct saying of Muhammad. Muslim know for sure this is true. All right, let's move on. Let's move on our study. An old story showing how ridiculous the idea is that the Quran contains scientific miracle. I believe this is the funniest, the funniest story I've ever told. I believe that woman you're about to hear her story is more, much wider, is much smarter than Allah and Muhammad and all Muslim scholars because she told us the truth. And when did she say that? She said that 1,400 years ago. All right, listen to the story. Here we go. Why doesn't the father Hamza come to us? He is staying next door to us, angry that I did not birth him son. And I swore to Allah that this is not in our hands. We are only like the earth for those who plant in us. We harvest what they plant in us. Wow, well, can you imagine that lady? She's crying. She lost Abu Hamza, her husband. He left her and now he's sleeping with the lady next door. He got another wife. Why is not staying with me? Why is not living with me? Why is not loving me? Oh, because he's upset. You did not get him a baby boy. Shame on you. Girl, 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 girl. How many girls are you going to give the guy? He need a male for heaven's sake. He need a boy. <laughs> but she told the truth. They're like earth. They harvest whatever seed he put in her. Did he give her the Y chromosome or did he give her another X chromosome? I love it how some of my neighbors in Egypt got divorced because her husband got sick of her. She got him four or five girls. So she moved on with her life. A couple years later, she married another guy. And guess what? He got one boy after another boy after another boy. So the problem is not in the female. The problem is in the male. Man sperm control what sex baby will be. As a matter of fact, right now, if you have the money, the doctor can reduce to you and it can make for you a baby boy or baby girl. What sex do you want? That's how far we become in science. Not Allah 42 days later. Not white yellow water and yellow water because there is no water for the female to start with. Let's move on with our study. Stage two, error number six, which obviously uh, Muhammad made an error concerning the source of the water. We, we've been talking about the Natfa, Natfa Amshaj, the mixed water. Where's the water come from? All right. 
where does the water come from? Once again, want to make sure and make sure, saying this clear teaching here. Why we'll not make this up? This coming from Muhammad and his scholars from the Quran and on and on with these Muslim wonderful uh, great uh, theologians. Okay, here we go. Quran chapter eighty six verse five and seven. We read. So let the human look to what he was created from. He was created from gushing water. It comes out from the backbones and the breasts. Once again, where does the water come from? Backbones of a man, breasts of the woman, and here's Quran 7, 172. And when your Lord took from the children of Adam their descendants from their backs and made them to testify against themselves, am I not your Lord? They said, yes, we testified that you should say on the resurrection day, surely we were unaware of that. So it's not just one verse about the man, uh, the, the children come from the backbone. Here we go, Quran 7, 172. As a matter of fact, we have a strong, long hadith. I might have time for it, but <laughs> let me go quickly here. I'll give you a summary of it. That Allah touched the back of Adam. Allah said, I want to bless you. I want to touch your back. Which hand do you want me to touch you with? So Adam said, oh, touch me by your right hand, oh Allah. And then, whoa, whoa, whoa. But he said, but both of your head is right hand. So Allah is like two right hand. So he touched him. And when he touched him, small spark light came out of his back. And he saw one of them small, tiny light. He said, what is this? Who is this? He said, that's your son, Adam. I'm sorry. That's your son, David. He will come years and say, why he does not have a bright light like the others? Said, well, because he will only live 60 years. So Adam said, would you please give him 40 years of my life? So now Allah said, okay. And so Allah took 40 years out of Adam and gave him to David, assuming that David lived to be 100 years. But guess what? According to the Bible, David only lived to be 73. So Muhammad is wrong and Allah is wrong. The whole thing is wrong. But when Allah touched Adam's back, he saw all this spark light coming out of it. These are the descendants of Adam. Wow. wow. That is, goes with the word of Allah in the Quran. The true account, uh, uh, the uh, formation of a baby. This is how the baby is made. And that is what is written in the book of Job. The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It's actually written before Genesis. So this was written roughly around 2100, 2200 years before Muhammad was the gleam in his father's eye. And here is the truth. Here we go. Job 10, 8 through 12. Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. I'm not going to have time to go to Job 10. Maybe Brother Sam can share this with you later. But was the information Muhammad given us close to that? Yeah, he's talking about clay. He talked about, you know, the how's that? The, the, as Job is talking about how he's made inside his mother womb. Well, guess what? The information is there, but Muhammad did not count on this information, which make his miracle no miracle, but he count on other information, which I'm going to share with you in the end of our study. And this other information, it show you that Muhammad was copying already information exists. And sadly, it's a false information, as we have seen so far. Now, uh, stage three. Stage three, we finished first stage, which is the stage of clay or dirt or tin. And now do we second stage was the stage of uh, water as the uh, uh, the not far and the mix of the water and we learn a lot about the white and yellow and all this stuff here and now we're going to go to stage three which is Quran chapter 23 verse 14 the first portion because that's a long verse where we'll be able to catch the next uh, four stages as well then we created the nutfa into a clot clot what is a clot do you know what clot is? No worry, Professor Moore did not know it either. So let's move on to the scientific error in stage three. Here is Professor Moore himself. Next uh, is Alaka. In the next slide, Alaka is uh, Surah Al Minim, Ayah 14. Then we created the drop into a leech like structure. Then, of that leech like structure, we made a chewed like substance. Uh, Alaka refers to a leech-like appearance, especially in about 22 days, as shown in this slide. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo 
but 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing and that it is truly, the human embryo is truly leech-like. <laughs> the leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac, which is embedded in the maternal blood and attached to the maternal endometrium or the lining of the uterus. Alec. He didn't say clot. It's like a leech. What did Professor Moore come up with? Say he's reading a verse of the Quran in English. Was this accurate translation? Of course not. They fixed the Quran from Arabic to English to deceive the West. To deceive those who speak English. To deceive even themselves. The Muslims who do not know the Arabic language. Really? Is this an accurate translation? Leech-like? Well, for the sake of time, what is the meaning of the word clot? Linguistically, let's look, let's go, we're going to do the Muslim scholars, the dictionary to Muhammad himself and learn about the clot. Here we go. From the dictionary, tongue of the Arabs. Clot is the blood. It is also congealed blood. It is the blood before it hardens. It is blood when it becomes dark red. That is the word clot, not leech. The bug you see, I'm going to show a picture here for the beach in a minute. The leech bug. Clot is blood. And notice he said, in the first 23 days, hello, Brother Moore, Brother Moore, wake up, sir, wake up. We're talking about 40 days of two water mixed together. There's nothing, no change is taking place whatsoever in the Natfa, the first, the second stage of the creation of Adam, the first stage. Natfa is two water, 40 days, not 23 days, not 25 days, not 40 days, now we go from 40 days of not far, no leech, to clot, blood, congealed blood. The interpretation of the clot by you some doctor. <laughs> no, 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 Muslim scholar, forget about me. I'm just a guy who translates the material from Arabic to English. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later, okay? Here we go. Meaning, we change the not far, which is the gushing water which comes from the backbone of man and the chest of the women which is the bone of her chest. So it will become a red clot, which is in the shape of a rectangle. And Akrama said, and it is blood. Akrama was 100% truthful. He knows the truth. He spoke the truth. It's just a blood. First stage is too fluid for 40 days. Second stage, Allah will change this two liquid, the yellow and the white, the soft and the harsh one a little bit, the little thick one, mix it together, mingled, okay, and now it's blood. For how long? For 40 more days. 80 days we got inside the mother womb a clot of blood. Allahu Akbar. I mean, seriously, you guys need to think about joining the, uh, the Muslim, say the Shahada, and become good Muslim. Let's move on. The clot in the Hadith and its interpretation. I'm talking about what Muhammad said. Not you some attack, but what Muhammad said about the clock. Okay, here we go. Any of you will be gathered in his mother's abdomen 40 days. Then he will become a clot like that 40 days. Hello? I'm not making this up. <laughs> Sahih Bukhari. And you find the same thing in Sahih Muslim. You find the same thing in Riyadh Salih. And you find the same thing. For, I mean, it is Muslim books. Thank you, Jesus, for making the Saudi rich. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing to put this material for us all over the internet so we can learn and we expose how evil Islam, how false Islam is. Now, so 40 days, water to water, 40 days, blood, and let's move on to here we go. You know what is this? This is just, I believe, uh, I don't know, less than 40 days. That is the first stage. That's a real picture of a baby inside the mother womb. Not too liquid water, not a piece of blood. No, 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 no. Here's a fact. This is less than a month. I don't have the date. If I have to get out of the PowerPoint to show you the exact date. You can go online and, 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 and find it. Actually, actually, it's coming. I have one picture show showing different weeks of the development of the baby. But that is the real thing. That is a real picture inside the baby. If you look by the, the put camera inside the mother womb, you see that. All right? Let's move on. That's a leech. Does this look like that? Let me ask you a question again. Does this look like that? 
This is 80 days. This is less than 40 days. I guarantee you, I believe it's four, three or four weeks. Does it look alike? Hello, Professor Moore. Now, let's move on. The scientific error in stage three. Here we go. Error number one. Error number one. The embryo never existed as congealed blood in any of the stages of growth. My bye, Muhammad. My bye, Muslim scholars. My bye, Allah. Bye bye. Let's go on. Let's keep going. Here we go. Error number two. Error number two. The clock stage described by Muhammad goes against the actual stage of the embryo between six and twelve weeks, forty to eighty days. All right. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is from Sahih Muslim, the correct hadith by Muslim, not Usama. I'm not, I have nothing to do with what I'm teaching you. I'm just translator, okay? Any of you, his creation, will be gathered in his mother's abdomen 40 days. Then he will become a clot like that 40 days. Then he will become a piece of flesh like that 40 days. Then Allah sent to him an angel who will breathe into him the spirit. And he will be ordered with four words. So he will write his provision, his length of life, his work, his hardship, or his happiness. 40 days, 40 days, 40 days, 120 days, and no life. No spirit. Something is growing inside the mother womb by itself. That's not a creature. Just whatever. We're going to find out how this is a big problem later as we continue. Here we go. Stage number three. The error number three. Error number three. The clock stage comes before the breathing of the spirit. It is not a living creature. You can't grow this thing if it's not a living. That thing inside the womb, it will not grow to be a baby if it is not a living, if there's no spirit in it. If 42 nights went by on the Nutfa, Allah sent to it its angel. So he shaped it and creates for it its hearing and its sight, and its skin, and its flesh, and its bones. Then the angel says, O oh Lord, is it a male or a female? So Allah decides what he wills, and the angel will write it down. And the angel will say, O oh Lord, it's term of life. So Allah decides what he wills, and the angel will write it down. Then the angel says, what about his provision? So Allah will decide whatever he wills, and the angel will write it down. Then the angel will come out with the scroll in his hand, so he will not add or subtract from what he was commanded. Notice, the angel is inside the mother womb. He had to come out. He go inside with a scroll, pen, or a pencil, write down the answer for this question. When you finish your scroll, roll the scroll, come out the mother womb. Come out. Use the imagination. I mean, Muhammad and Allah, is, oh, it's amazing. I mean, powerful. But, the Lord will tell the angel if it's a baby boy or a baby girl, but we have different times. Some say 42 and some say 120 days because that's when the spirit will be put in him. In different hadiths, it's 120 days. Ah. So error number four, obviously. Error is, number four. The determination of the sex of the embryo does not happen until the clock stage, 40 to 80 days. But in reality, as we said before, it is a man, a cortisone, the Y will make the baby boy or the ex will make the baby girl and that is at conception as a matter of fact now as you do it outside they make you a baby boy and then the with the the uh, the mingled <laughs> to uh, the sperm and the eggs inside the mother woman she'll have a baby boy or a baby girl scientific errors in stage four here we go professor moore himself vodka stage Sir, uh, minimum, I uh, won the 14, and I repeated that before. Then we created the drop into a leech-like structure. Then of that leech-like structure, we made a chewed-like substance, which you can see here, and begins during the six week. Six weeks? What, my friend? We're talking about 80 days already gone, and now we're going to the 120, the last 40 days. Alka is a clot. Mother is a chewing substance. What is chewing substance? We, I mean, we're chewing that? Chewing substance. Well, let's learn about the real meaning of the madha. <laughs> and not a chewing substance. It's actually uh, a piece of flesh. Here we go. 
from the dictionary. From the dictionary, tongue of the Arabs. Madha, a piece of meat. And it was said that Madha could be from other than meat. Khalid ibn Jan said, Madha, of the meat is the amount which a man can put into his mouth. Yeah. As, uh, you get a, a spoon of meat or a nice piece of meat and you, must, and you chew on it. But madha is a piece of meat. So move from two fluid for 40 days, a kinji blood for 40 days. Now Allah will make that kinji blood to a piece of meat. All right, let's continue a little bit more. The madha in the hadith. How Muhammad used the word madha? Here we go. Muhammad said, isn't it and for sure in the flesh there is a madha? If it does good, all the flesh will be good. And if it spoils, the whole flesh becomes spoiled. This is the heart. The madha is a heart. And heart is a madha. Why? Because Muhammad see the heart in a shape of a piece of meat and the heart is meat. All right. It's here. He's saying here the interpretation of Fath al-Bari. He's saying madha meaning the amount of what is chewed. And he expressed it here with the amount of heart as it looks. It looks like a heart, and you, what you put in your mouth, you chew on it. Fath al-Bari, not you some back dog. All right, okay, Muhammad said also what? The, the year Muhammad is talking about his own beloved daughter, Fatma, which shows the hypocrisy of Muhammad. It's okay for him to have a bunch of women as wives. It's okay for his Muslim men to have a bunch of women as wives or concubines, but it's not okay for his own daughter that her husband have another wife next to her. Huh. Wow. Muhammad said, Verily Fatma, the daughter of Muhammad, is a madha of me, and I do not approve that she may be put to any trial. And by Allah, the daughter of Allah's messenger cannot be combined with the daughter of God's enemy as the co-wives of one person. You know, when we will say a piece of flesh of me, yes, indeed. Fatma is a piece of flesh of Muhammad. She's a madha from him. So, Mother in the Quran and its interpretation. We'll go to Quran chapter 22, verse 5. Listen to what Allah said about mother. O oh, you people, if you were in doubt of the resurrection, so surely we created you from dirt, then from nutfa, then from a clot, then pieces of flesh, created and uncreated. Oh, now I'm going to learn something new about that madra, that piece of meat or piece of flesh. There are two different kinds. One is created and one is uncreated. Move on. And that is Nutfa stayed in the womb of the woman 40 days. Likewise, it will be added to it what is gathered to it. Then it will change to red clot by Allah's permission. So it will stay likewise 40 days. It transforms into Madha, a piece of flesh. Says who? Says the great Muslim scholar Ibn Kasir in his interpretation to Quran chapter 22 verse 5. Let's move on. Interpretation of Arazi. Meaning, we made that congealed blood madha, meaning a piece of flesh as if it is equal to what is chewed and it is equal to what is scooped. This English? Yeah. Word for word from Arabic. Thanks for Arazi and uh, all these wonderful Muslim scholars. And we can go on and on, read you another 10 different interpretations, but they're all the same. Madha is a piece of flesh. How big it is, as much as you can put in your mouth. You can put it and you chew on it. I know some people can make a big bite and put us. No, just you know the normal chewing. Okay, that's how big is a mother. Now we got 120 days baby inside the mother womb is just a piece of meat. No kidding. And so far there's no spirit in him. It's just something is changing inside the mother womb. No spirit, no life. It just moved from the two water to a uh, 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 blood or a clot, and then now we got a piece of meat. That that must be great science. That must be a great miracle. So we created the clot into a piece of flesh, and it is a piece like the piece of meat, which has no form and layout. Says who? Ibn Kassir again. These are the Muslim scholars. So I'm not making this up. It's reality. Neither Allah nor Muhammad or Professor Moore have a clue with the reality of the true grow of a baby inside the mother room, as we're going to see in a minute. Now let's look at the interpretation of the madha to those who claim there are miracles in the Quran. Here we go. Now I'm going to show you pictures so we don't have to worry about 
uh, too much reading and too much just meter. Here it is, madra. Man, you me, you get a chewing gum and you put it in mouth, even if you put two and you chew on it. And when you put your teeth in it and make a shape like that, so here we go. And here is the embryo. Is embryo, here's a mother. They look alike, yeah, they're close to each other. No, 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 no. They don't look alike, trust me. You're gonna learn a lot here. They don't look alike at all. Watch the details, watch the details. Now, does this fetus look like a piece of chewing gum to you? I'm, I'm giving you a true picture, closer look, just look, look close now. When you chew a gum, does it look like that? What is the chance you put the uh, chewing gum in your mouth and you play with your mouth and you get it out and look like that? The chance is zero, especially when it knows the more. Now, here is, uh, I want to compare the piece of gum, the chewing piece of meat or gum, and the real, real uh, fetus, okay? Here we go. If you look here on the right side, guess what? There are indentures. And here is there's bru uh, 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 brutures. So if you look on the right side here, you see there's holes when you put your teeth on the top and the bottom of your teeth on the chewing gum, there's holes. Here, there's actually a piece of uh, fabric or material sticking out. Now let's move it in, move it in. Here's our, you know, depend how many teeth you can put. Here's eight teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is. Here is 36. Vertebra. What is that? Is the backbone of the baby as the baby continues to grow. Now, let, let's just say it's very important. This is not that big as this. Why? Because this is five centimeters. Uh, what's five centimeters? An inch and a half. This is an inch and a half. An inch and an inch and three eighths. An inch, and, you know. And here's five millimeters. So let me put them next to the ruler so you can see. Here's the embryo, five millimeter. Here's a chewing gum. Woohoo! Five centimeters. Are you trying to tell me that this look like that? Of course it don't. And what is so funny when you look at the next one? You don't don't now hold yourself now. I don't want you to fall off the chair when you laugh. Hold yourself. Are you sitting comfortably? Here we go. Look at this. Here is 98 days, baby, and here is 180 and 100 to 120 days piece of flesh. Hello. Is somebody hearing me? Does this baby look like this piece of chewing gum? I'm talking about 98, 100 day to 120 between, say, let's say 100 days, 100 days. This is the condition of Allah and Muhammad is telling us about the baby inside the secure place, inside the mother's womb, and that is the real thing at the same age. A baby, a chewing gum. Does it look alike? You tell me, my dear Muslim friends, does this look like that? Of course not, unless you're out of your mind. Created and uncreated. We talked about the two different pieces of flesh now. One is created and one is uncreated. And I know, I know Muslim scholars disagree about what that means, but let's quickly read the interpretation of al qurtubi to this uh, mystery, created and uncreated piece of flesh. Alfred said, created means completed the creation. Uncreated means a miscarriage. If the baby continues in the mother womb, that's a created. If it miscarriage or fall to get out of the mother womb for some reason, then it is uncreated. That's one interpretation. How about this one? Ibn al-Arabi said, created means which began its creation, and uncreated means the which is not created yet. That means they both are going to be created later? Trust me. It is sets of words. Muhammad put words in the Quran without any meaning, and Muslims are trying to make meaning with the Quran. So they invented interpretation. Here we go. Ibn Zaid said, created means the one which Allah created in it, the head and the hands and the legs. Uncreated means the one which nothing was created in it. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Yeah, <laughs> Ibn Zaid said it, it's true, it's a scholar. That's how we got Muslim scholars. Are you trying to tell me that this is created, the baby boy here you see on the left screen, and, and this piece of flesh, a uh, piece of meat does not have any sheep, is uncreated? Are you out of your mind, people? Natva, after it changed to a piece of flesh, Makkah, 
There is nothing can be to it except it becomes a complete creature, except to be fashioned, and that is what it meant by his saying, created and uncreated. A complete creature and uncreated, the one miscarried by the mother. It is a piece of meat without any fashion, and the spirit will not be breathed in it. So if a mama lose a baby at the age of 120, it will come out like a piece of meat, a chewing gum. Yep, let's continue. Let's continue. We'll have lots of fun here. Here we go. As if Allah divides the piece of meat into two. One of them is completely fashioned with the senses and the shapes. And the second, which is missing these things, which means he clearly states that after the embryo became a piece of flesh, some of them was created a complete human without any deformation, and others who were not like that, and that is described by Kadada and al dahak as if Allah saying that he created the piece of meat in different shapes. <laughs> Are you lost yet? Are you confused? Welcome to the world of interpretation of Muslim scholars. Sometimes I read just a simple verse, like seven words, and you go to this uh, scholar al or al or Jalil. I'm not kidding you. And you read five, six pages on that simple verse. Halfway through, you just finish two pages or so, you forgot. Literally, you you forgot what you were reading about. So you go back to the verse. It's like, I, 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 I can't be said. I'm not joking. After reading half of the interpretation of the verse, you forgot what was the verse is about. Because they're going in circles. They're making up interpretation. They're inventing interpretation of the Quran. Yep. I got it. If you understood it, you are much smarter than me. Because so far, I didn't get nothing out of this one. But here we go. Some of it is created completely, and this means soft without any deformity, and others are the opposite of that. Thank you, Arazi. That was a wonderful interpretation. I appreciate you. <laughs> here we go. Let's, hope, uh, let's see Hosaifa, okay? Hosef, son of Asad al-Jafari, said, I heard the messenger by my two ears as he pointing to them said, surely the nutfa fall in the womb 40 nights. Then the angel fashioned on it. So the angels go inside the womb and work on it, makes this uh, nutfa to alqa to madha. Uh -huh. Good, 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 good. Zoyer said, I thought he said the one he created. So he will say, oh Lord, is it a male or a female? So Allah will answer male or female. Then he will say, Oh Lord, is it completely formed or deformed? So Allah will make him completely formed or deformed. Then he will say, Oh Lord, what is his provision? What is his term of life? What is his creature? Then Allah will make him miserable or happy. Allahu Akbar. This is how we learn about the creation and the angel working hard to fashion it and he asked oh allah allah are you going to make it a complete baby or incomplete baby uh, uh deformed or 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 a form i mean how do you want it will you make it to be this uh, you know uh, uh, get out of the body of the woman without being completely in, in its in the formation or will keep it inside for the rest of the time of pregnancy all right the scientific error in stage four the scientific error in stage four. Here we go. Number one. Error number one. The description of the flesh does not fit with the true shape of embryology in this stage. I already show you the picture. Ha ha. Here's a real baby. Not a chewing gum. Not a piece of meat. Okay. 11 to 14 weeks. I did not know exactly uh, when I was earlier. And here's 15 to 18 weeks. This is 5 to 8 centimeter. Uh, 8 centimeter like two and a half inch something like this big this one is of course uh, 15 to 18 weeks is 9 to 14 depend some you know how children some of them are born 22 inches some of them are born you know uh, for 17 inches some is 23 so that, that's how so that is the reality we're talking about 10 weeks is literally six six centimeter this big two inches or so and we move on to 18 weeks uh 14 centimeter that is what come out of the mother womb when she lose a baby. Not a piece of flesh, uh, not smooth. Smooth what? We're talking about the head, ears, hand, legs, full baby. Look at it. 
surely every one of you were gathered in his mother's abdomen 40 days. Then he will become a clot like that 40 days. Then he will become a piece of flesh like that 40 days. Then Allah will send to him an angel with four words. So he will write his work, his term of life, his provision, miserable or happy. Then he breathed in him the spirit. Notice after this 120 days, then he will put the spirit in him. Error number two. This stage of embryology is not alive yet. There is no spirit in it. Logic. Welcome to the miracle of Muhammad in the Quran. Uh, this is obviously a picture inside the mother womb where you can see a baby from outside. <laughs> this is an old picture. That's old technology. Muhammad did not know that. Because new technology now is you put camera inside and they show you what we have seen in previous pictures. Okay? Uh, the stage of the bone and the flesh. Of course, that is stage number five, the bone and the flesh. Listen to Professor Moore and how uh, great he is in his teaching about the subject. Next uh, stage is uh, Al Kissa Bil Lan, Surah Al Mu'minun, Ayah 14. Then we close the bones with flesh. So in the previous stage, then we had the bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. So this Arabic term means a clothing uh, with flesh, and after the bones form, they become surrounded or clothed by flesh or muscles, which acquire attachments to them. These muscle attachments permit movements of the skeleton to occur. So Professor Moore, before Allah do that stage, covering the bones with flesh, if a mama lose a baby before that point, before the stage, will the baby come out of her as a skeleton? No, no flesh, no skin, just a skeleton? Hello? If you tell me in that stage, the bones are covered with flesh. That means there was bones without flesh. Is that true? Quran 23 verse 14. Is the true translation of the English of the Arabic Quran in my translation? Here it is. Listen carefully. So we created the piece of flesh into bone. So we clothe the bone with flesh. Notice here in English, not the fabricated answer and the fabricated interpretation, the weirdo hermeneutics of Muslim scholars. Allah said, So we created the piece of flesh into bone. So the piece of meat we're talking about here, Al Madha. Allah will change it to bones. And then he will cover this bone with flesh. Hello, English. English. I'm reading. But listen to how Muslim scholar will interpret this. That is Ibn Kasir. He said, So we created the piece of flesh into bone, meaning we shaped it with head, two hands, two legs, with its bones and its muscles and its veins. Does this sound to you like interpretation or fabrication? It's like, so we created the piece of flesh into bones. Means what? Listen carefully. We shaped it with head. That means the head is made out of meat or bone. And two hands. Is this two hands meat or bone? And legs with its bones. God help us. This is the great Muslim scholar, Evan Kassir, like the rest of the great Muslim scholars whom I call Muslim dumbers. Here you go. Awesome. Read it. So we created the piece of flesh bones. And in the reading of Abdullah, then we created the nut of bones and muscles. So we closed it flesh. Thanks, al -Tibri. I learned a lot. The miracle of the Quran. Actually, the, the miracle of Muslim scholars interpretation. That's another miracle. Forget about Allah and Muhammad. Forget about the, the Quran and the Hadith. Muslim scholars themselves, when they give me that interpretation, that itself is a great miracle. And his saying, so we clothe the bones flesh. He says, so we clothe the bones flesh. <laughs> I learned a lot. Man, oh man, may Allah bless you, al -Tabari. Now you show me and you prove to me that you're a scholar. Because listen, just listen carefully. He's saying, so we closed the bones flesh. 
He says, so we close the bones flesh. Allahu Akbar. That's great knowledge. This is exactly what Al Jalalain does in the interpretation of Zan Takran. Go read his interpretation on the Saudi Arabia official website. He says the verse in Arabic and he repeats it in Arabic. He never put a word extra. Literally, the interpretation of Al Jalalain is twice as big as the Quran. One time the Quran and he repeats the Quran below the Quran. Word for word, verse by verse. The bones and the flesh in the hadith. Let's learn from Muhammad. Muhammad knows better about bones than, uh, than Allah. Here we go. The messenger of Allah said, Oh, the flesh of the son of Adam will rot except his bones. From it he was created and put together. So we close the bones flesh, meaning we put on that which covered it and strengthened it. Um, I would challenge our dear Muslim friends to go to uh, the tomb of Muhammad. It's only 1400 years. And let's see how much of his bones still left. I don't believe bones stay forever because if that's the case, we'll have tons of bones everywhere. The mummies of the Egyptian, with all the best thing, when you touch them, they fall apart. The dust is from dust to dust. Not from bone to bone, stay bone. So anyway, let's move on. The scientific errors in stage five, which is the flesh and the bones. Are you ready? Here we go. Error number one. Bones began in the 14th week, not after the 17th week. So the idea is that water turned to congealed blood, congealed blood turned to a uh, 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 piece of flesh, and piece of flesh it changed or created to bones, and then covers the bones with uh, flesh. This, this is a joke. The miracle of Muhammad, the miracle of the Quran is a joke. As a matter of fact, if you do a little bit study about bones, as I did, you found that the bones continue to grow after birth for a boy to age at uh, 22 for the girl to age 18 you continue to grow your bones when a baby is born does not have any bones it's good roof good roof is like a, 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 a soft uh, uh, what do you call a, i don't know what you call roof in english whatever the word is uh, it is soft uh, material that's how the baby cannot come out of the mother first canal and then the baby the longer the baby live and eat and fed his the, his good roof becomes stronger stronger become more of a bone the idea that the bone it covered with meat is a joke. Error number two flesh began in the appearance before the bones, not after the bones. <laughs> Hello, logic, common sense, science. Here we go, Muhammad. Watch with the pictures, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Now we are in the stage number three meat. And then Allah said, He changed the meat, He created the meat to bones. Here you go, look, 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 bones, is that's it. If a mama lose her baby before that bone is covered with meat and skin, it will. she will literally uh, lose a, a skeleton, not a baby, a skeleton. And then he covers the skeleton with meat and bone. Look at this, with meat and uh, muscles, flesh. And then he have obviously a baby. Huh. Uh, final stage, the other creature, the other creature. Where does this come from? Uh, let's listen first to Professor Moore, and we're going to get to you the Quran and the Hadith, and we'll go to some real closing sports here. I'm almost done. Give me just uh, another 20 minutes. So we'll, we'll be covering you. Yeah, this is the final stage of development called Al Nasha. Uh, then we developed of him another creation. Uh, Al Nasha means uh, growth or coming into being. This undoubtedly refers to the fetal period when there is growth and differentiation of the embryo that developed in the embryonic period. The rate of body growth during the fetal period is remarkable, especially between the ninth and 16th weeks. Notice how quickly it's growing in this uh, nasha stage or uh, fetal period, as we call it. Anasha. What is anasha? I have no idea. The word anasha does not exist in the Quran, but it's a new creature. Here we go, new creature. A full term of a baby. Here we go. Uh, here is the real science, uh, real pictures. And be in uh, six weeks, six weeks, you got uh, four to five millimeter. And let's go to nine weeks, uh, 11 to 12 millimeter. Uh, 14 weeks, five to eight 
centimeter, centimeter. That's 50 to 80 millimeter. Every 10 millimeter make one centimeter. This is the real picture. That's the real thing. No such a thing is as so. None of these early stages, if it is four to if it is six weeks or seven weeks or eight weeks or nine weeks and weeks, is a skeleton. They all grow together. The flesh and the bones and the meat all grow together. The idea is that we made him this, and then we made him this, and then we made him this, and 40 days and 40 days and 40 days. It's a joke. It's an embarrassment. Thank God I'm not a Muslim. I don't have to be embarrassed about that. Here's a verse, the new creature. Then we made it another creature. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. Hmm. The other creature. It, it, it's just a joke. I was saying a joke. Professor Mori, you go. Last uh, ayah is Surah Abasa, ayah 19 and 20. From a drop, he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term, uh, means to make the passage easy. It is well known that as the time of birth approaches, the maternal tissues of the cervix and the joints of the pelvis become looser so that the passage of the fetus through the fetal canal will be facilitated. This process, initiated by hormones in the mother's blood, accelerates during the early stages of labor or delivery of the baby. As the amniochorionic sac, that is the bag of waters, surrounding the baby, expands near the time of birth, it protrudes into the cervix, that is the neck of the uterus, and causes it to dilate. When the amniochorionic sac ruptures, the amniotic fluid provides a slippery pathway for the fetus to pass along the cervix and vagina to the outside of its mother. All the above occurrences facilitate the birth of the baby, that is, they make the passage easy. Wow. Are you killer rat? <laughs> Lots of good food and a little bit poison. I mean, he's talking about things in, in reality about the first canal and all these things, the hormones, blah, blah, blah. But this has nothing to do with the Quran. You cannot interpret a nonsense Quran, an error in the Quran, with the fact and science and tell me, hey, the Quran is a miracle. You have to be fooled to believe in that. Here's the verse of the Quran. Quran chapter 80, verses 18 to 21. From what thing did he create him? He created him from Nafa, so he estimated him. Then he made his way easy. Then he caused him to die, so he buried him. Why Professor Moore did not read verse 21? He concentrated here on verse 20. Then he made his way easy. And believe me. No such a thing as a mama having a baby isn't easy unless Professor Moore have a baby sometime, then he can tell us how it feels like. I already talked to what seven, eight women today. I said, Tell me about when you have your first baby or second baby or last baby. Was it easy? Oh no, brother Sama. It is so painful. It's so painful. But Professor Moore interpreted the statement then he made in verse 20 here Quran chapter 80 verse 20 then he made his way easy that Allah in a miracle of the Quran causes the baby to come out easy from the mother from the mother belly really through the birth canal really is this the best interpretation you can put the Quran they're trying to find something in the Quran to make miracle but guess what that's not even the accurate interpretation to that verse I'm gonna prove it to you this is nonsense why it was difficult for every mama to have a baby? Because guess what? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible tells us as a punishment for Eve's sin to the woman, he said, God Almighty said to Eve, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. In pain, you must bring forth children. You know what that means in pain? It's not easy. Find me a woman who have a baby easy, and I will believe in that garbage and these lies of Muslim scholar and Professor Moore. It's never be it's never easy. Very painful. Why? Because there's a punishment. God said it, and the word of God is true. And more, and this hogwash with him are all a bunch of liars. People disagree in another creature. Ibn Abbas and Al Shabi and Abu Al Alia and Al Dahak. And Ibn Zaid said, it, embryo, 
breathed the spirit in it after it was lifeless. It is a new creature. It was without life, without spirit, when Allah put the spirit in it, it make it a new creature. Let's continue. Mujahid said, the way of the truth and the vanity, as who stated, that it is like his saying, surely we guided him the way, either as thankful or infidel. Quran 76 verse 3. He continued to say, the way of hardship and happiness, as stated in Quran 90 verse 10, and we guided him the two ways. Katana said, that is the way of good. Yunus said that he guided him to Islam, which he made easy for him, and he taught him. So what is the true interpretation to that verse? We're talking about Quran chapter 80 verse 20 here. Then he made his way easy. This is not about the birth canal. That's not about the mama having a baby. That is about the choices which Allah gave to the Muslim man. As I'm interpreting the Quran by the Quran, I'm not making this up. That was actually what come from Mujahid. That is inter in the interpretation of the great Muslims, Quran Al-Tabri. He's telling us this is like the verse which we read in the Quran, chapter 56, verse 3. Surely we guided him the way either as thankful or infidel. When Allah guide the people to choose being thankful or to be in, uh, infidel, to be thankful or to be grateful, or as we said in the rest of the verses here, he got him the way. Uh, like Yunus said, uh, he make it his way easy to guide him to Islam. For every baby is born to be a Muslim, unless they're influenced by their parents or their friend and makes them something else. As we said before, I repeat, when a person comes back to Islam, they don't say he converted to Islam. They say he reverted to Islam because it was easy for the person to be a Muslim unless his influence was other. But listen to this carefully. Why Professor uh, uh, Moore did not read verse 21? If it is true what he said here, verse 18, Allah, he said, from what things did he created him? Talking about the man, verse 19, he created him from natfa. That is the first two full fluid. After it from natfa to uh, alqa, which is the uh, the uh, clot of uh, uh, blood, and then from uh, madha, which is a piece of meat. And no, 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 no. But listen to this, verse 20. Then he made his way easy. He came out of the mama, birth canal, easy. Because of the fluid and the hormone, the blah, blah, blah. This is verse 21, which he did not read. Then he caused him to die, so he buried him. Excuse me, what? You mean the baby is born to die? And who buried him? Allah Almighty buried him? What is this? There's no life? Yeah, he was born easy. Then Allah caused him to die. Then Allah buried him. What a great life. I don't know how in the world I left my I lived on this earth 50 years. I should be dead literally 50 years ago after birth. According to that verse, no. So Muslim will make interpretation. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that verse, but I'm sorry. No mama yet in planet Earth, the last six thousand years from first mama, mama, mother Eve, until uh, the last mama had a baby a minute ago or 10 seconds ago in some hospital. All of them have pain. It was never easy. Unless some men of those Muslim scholars can have a baby easy, men have a baby out of them easy, then we can believe in their hogwash. People disagree. Okay. The first saying is accurate. The saying of those who said he meant by that the breath of the spirit in it, the embryo. And that is when he breathed the spirit in it, it will change into a new creature, human. And before that, Allah described it to be from nutfa and clot and piece of flesh and bone. Air al tabri repeated everything we said before. And with the breathing of the spirit in it, he would change from all these descriptions to human description as his father Adam changed by breathing the spirit into the mud, which he was created from a human and a new creature, not the mud, which he was created from. So the new creature is the breath of the spirit into the baby after 120 days. Surely every one of you were gathered in his mother's abdomen 40 days. Then he will become a clot like that 40 days. Then he will become a piece of flesh like that 40 days. Then Allah will send to him an angel with four words. So he will write his work, his term of life, his provision, miserable or happy, 
Then he breathed in him the spirit. This is the new creature. That is the last stage, which obviously is stage number five, six, if you had Adam and Eve, uh, the creation of the first man from dirt. According to Ibn Maso, was all his ways. This is proof that embryo changed in 120 days into three changes. Each one is 40 days. Then at its completion, the spirit will be breathed in it. Scholars agreed that the blowing of the spirit will not happen until after four months. Welcome to the miracle of Allah and the Quran. The meaning of the blowing of the spirit. Uh, a little bit of our subject, but quickly I want to share with you a couple of verses in Quran chapter 15, verse 29. We read, So when I have fashioned him and breathed into him from my spirit, so fall down, of course, worshiping him. Of course, Allah he was talking about Adam. He put his spirit, he blow his spirit, put his spirit in his mattress, he became a living creature. That's exactly what happened inside the womb. The angel go inside the womb after have the conversation with Allah, write it down as a scroll, put the breath of life in the in the baby. Now the baby is a living creature. But before that, it was not a baby, it was just something else. Okay. Similar to that, we read in Quran chapter 3, verse 49 about Isa creating a bird out of clay. And he did what? Listen. And a messenger to the children of Israel. Indeed, I came to you with a sign from your Lord. I create for you the figure of a bird. From the tin, so I breathe into it, so it will become a bird by Allah's permission. Notice here also Isa breathed into this bird which made out of mud or, or tin, which is mud. Okay. Whoever draws a picture in this world, Allah will order him on the day of judgment to blow in it the spirit, and he cannot blow. And because he cannot blow the spirit into the picture to make it a living thing, that person will spend eternity in hell. Most of them believe you should never have a picture in your home. Having a picture in your home, if you draw it or you have it, that's a sin. Why? Because in the day of resurrection, you will you, you'll be commanded to make it a living. Since you cannot make it a living picture, then guess what? You can stay eternity in hell. Ridiculous teaching, but that is the idea of blowing the spirit. The scientific errors in stage six, quickly I'll share with you. Error number one, the embryo is alive from the beginning, not just beginning after 120 days. That's facts. That's truth. Matter of fact, if it stopped living in any time, in the time of pregnancy, the mother will have miscarriage. She will lose a baby because that baby has to be alive all the time. That's what happened when mama lost her babies. The miscarriage is what? The baby died for some reason. Error number two, abortion in Islam. Whoa, abortion in Islam. Yes, indeed. You heard me right. You see, in Islam, you can have abortion, no, but not all the time. They're different philosophy, different agreement, but, but in reality, Muslims can abort their baby up to 120 days. Why? Because the 120 days, that's when the spirit comes to the baby. Before that, the baby is not a baby. It's just a piece of flesh, a piece of meat, skeleton. From the Islam web, fatwa number 65,114. Without any disagreement, after the spirit breathes into the embryo, it is not lawful to abort it. But before that, there is disagreement. So the majority of the scholars forbid it, and others allow it if it is done hatefully. And some allow it with an excuse. And some said you can do it freely. And perhaps the saying to allow it in the first 40 days is acceptable if there is an excuse and something good comes out of it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what good come out of it, but here you go. Error number three. Error number three. No prayer on the miscarriage before the blowing of the spirit. So any mama will lose a baby before the the 120 days, uh, the four months, they don't pray over their dead bodies, even though in Islam, very important to pray over the dead body, okay? And there is no prayer on the miscarried body except after four months. And it was said to him, was it less than four months? No. In the first four months, its embryo creation will begin. And he said... The clot, it is blood. Creation will not appear in it. Yeah. Who said that? Fath al-Bari. Great Muslim scholar. Okay, we have to we have to believe in him. All right. As for the one who has not completed four months, so he will not be washed, and no prayer will be offered on him. He will be wrapped in a rag and buried. And we do not know if there is any disagreement about that, except from Ibn Sarin. So he said, 
that prayer will be offered on it if we know that the spirit was breathed in him. Only Ibn Sarin said that. But all Muslims God said, listen for a month, you don't pray over them, you don't wash them, you don't do any of the things which we do to the dead people grown up. And the hadith of the truthful prove that the spirit will not be blown in it until after four months. So before that, there is no breath of life in it, so there is no prayer to be on it, as in the case of an inanimate object and the blood. Mm -hmm. From Al-Imam Al-Nuani, a question, do we pray over the embryo which was miscarried before the completion of pregnancy? As for the embryo which was miscarried before the completion of four months, all scholars agree that there is no prayer to be offered over an embryo which was miscarried before the completion of four months. That's a baby uh, in the early, early days of creation. It looked like a baby, and that's a real picture, by the way. Error number four. Error number four. No resurrection for the embryos which died before the blowing of the spirit. Why is that? It's very simple. Listen to the answer. As for the pregnancy, which the spirit was not breathed in it, so surely the miscarried one will not come back to life because that day is for the return of the spirit. So if it did not die in this world, it will not live in the hereafter. Logic. Makes sense. The stages of development of the embryology or embryo and the original meanings. Here we go quickly, I'll share with you. If you look at the word, uh, the first word is the word natfa. Uh, according to Muslim scholars' interpretation, according to the Quran, according to Muhammad teaching in the Hadith, it is the water of the man and the water of the woman. That is the original meaning. According to Professor Moore and the Muslim of the West, it's actually the sperm and the egg. What is the evidence? Well, uh, there's no evidence. Just take my word for it, all right? Let's move in second page. The word is a clot. What it is? It is King G of blood. Says who? Says Allah the Quran, says Muhammad in the Hadith, says all Muslim scholars. But to the miraculous people who believe in the miracle of the Quran, it's actually a leech. Says who? Professor Moore and the Muslims who live in the West. And what is their evidence? There is no evidence. I'll just take my word for it. Let's go to the next word. The word is madgha, which is a piece of flesh. Says who? Says Allah in the Quran, Muhammad in the Hadith, Muslim scholars interpretation. But in America, it's a chewing gum. How? I don't know. All right? What is the evidence? There is no evidence. How about the other creature? The other creature. According to the Quran and Muhammad teaching in the Hadith and Muslim scholars, it's actually the blow of the spirit into the baby after 120 days. Before that, it was not a living thing. But in America, with the Muslim and Professor Moore, it's actually the change of human. Somehow, some change happened. Now we got a new creature. What is the evidence? They have zero evidence. It's a picture of millions and millions of sperm. Here's, by the way, a picture of a mama lost a baby. That's a baby here. And the baby was not a skeleton, as Muslims believe. It was actually a piece of uh, flesh. No, not flesh. If you look carefully, you find there more detail in it that you can imagine. And that is roughly around three and a half centimeter uh, by four centimeter close to it. That is actually, if you take it apart, you see the beginning of the babies. And that is a true picture. Uh, the stages of the development of the embryo and the Greek philosophers. By the way, uh, this is the last portion we're going to have to gather tonight. And I'm sorry for speaking too fast and looking too much here. But I'm almost done here. I'm almost done. Uh, when we say, when Muslims say, how did Muhammad know that 1,400 years ago? Well, guess what? We already have enough books, enough material with knowing Muhammad is. But Muhammad cannot read and write. Really? We got enough evidence. Muhammad can read and write. Yes, he was illiterate. He was ignorant. So is his Allah, so is his Muslim scholars. So is every Muslim who believe that there's a miracle in the Quran. But in reality, people in Muhammad days travel. You know, can you imagine with me when you travel from here to California? Not California. Let's go. For, I'm in Missouri right now. From Missouri to Mississippi. Okay? It's eight hours by car or ten hours by the car. But guess what? If you're riding a camel, it's a long days, weeks of travel. And what do people do when they walk on the camel in the desert? They talk. Muhammad got most of his knowledge from other people by talking. But how did Muhammad know it is oh, it's already false error? I don't care if he got it from Allah, got it from Jibreel, got it from some uh, somebody other angel. It's false error. But here is the evidence. Muhammad got his information from books written hundreds of years before him. Let me give you some of these examples. Some of these examples. 
Okay, the idea is that water, sperm, come out of the backbone. This is not Muhammad invention. This is actually given by the great theologian, the, the Greek uh, uh, scholar, uh, which was actually written roughly two to three hundred years before Muhammad. It is a book. It is the page of the book. From the book, Desamine, page 117. The artery and vein, beginning of the vessels, descend through the backbone to the testicles until they reach what is called the epididymis. And a lot of seminal channels flow from them to the testes. Is this true? No. False information exists hundreds of years before Christ. Hundreds of years before Muhammad. Just a week before Muhammad was born. Therefore, his information is not a miracle because it's not new, as we said about what is miracle. New information, true information. It is all information and it is false information. And it's a miracle. Here we go. So let the human look to what he was created from. He was created from gushing water. It comes out from the backbones and the breasts. So that idea come originally from books written hundreds of years before Muhammad. It's not a Quran. It's not a miracle. Okay. Here we go. The idea is that women uh, produce fluid. Okay. By the way, it's logic. If you are a married man and you have made love to your wife, well, guess what? This fluid there, but that fluid is not the source of how the baby is made. The fluid make it easy for a man to have sexual relationship with a woman. Otherwise, some women cannot produce the fluid. They have to use some uh, cream or some uh, medical help. It's not comfortable. God, in his wisdom, in his love for us, he wants us to enjoy such a relationship with our wives, and he wanted to make it a pleasurable experience, not a, a painful experience. So that fluid is not a miracle. Oh, Muhammad did not have any observation. He did not have enough women to sleep with. He never figured out that women can have uh, produced fluid. But that fluid is not yellow and have nothing to do with having baby. Okay? From the book, this page 153. It is very preferable to trust in the visible evidence that a woman has water and to search logically for the power in it that the woman's spermatic channels produce semen regardless of sexual intercourse with a man or not. Women dream just like men, and semen is also found in animals on the vaginal membrane. Not just human, you can find it in cows and dogs, okay? The idea is that the mixing of the water of a woman and the water of a man. This is not Muhammad's idea. It's not a miracle from Allah through Jibreel. It is actually all the formation written in the same book, which was written, I said here, 4 to 5. This piece of information, 4 to 5 BC. That's a long time. Hundreds of years before Muhammad. From the book, Dissamine, page 153. Hippocrates suggested that when the two waters are mingled, one complete fluid is made. How? Logic, common sense, something you can observe, something you can see by your eyes. Okay? From the book, This Amin, page 147. Surely Hippocrates is the one who discovered these discoveries. If the two fluids stayed in the womb of the woman, first they were mingled. And since a woman does not sit still, so it will curdle because of the body heat. Hippocrates taught the rest of the stages as it happened as a result of the mingling of the two fluids, so the fetus will grow. Let's continue, page 109. From the book, this to me, page 109. Claudius Gallinus stated in his book that a man's fluid is white, thick, and viscous, and it is what makes the flesh, the veins, and the nerves. Hello, Prophet Muhammad is not a prophet. He's not a miraculous man here because he's copying all the information. By the way, it is false information. I mean, if he copies some true information, it will make sense, but he's copying false information. Let's continue. Here's the verse of the Quran, by the way, 76.2. Surely we created the human from Natfa Amshaj. We test him, so we made him hearing, seeing. Here's a mingled water. It is created from both of the man's Natfa and the woman's Natfa. As for the man's Natfa, it is thick, and from it the bones and the nerves. And for the woman's Natfa, it is soft and from it the flesh and the blood. So Muhammad and his car was copying older people who existed 100 years before them. Here we go. Is the idea, um, the idea of the relationship of the male and the female uh, concerning the uh, 
the high of the men's water or the woman's water uh, having a baby boy or baby girl resentment of the baby to the father or to the uncles uh, the uh, the family of his mama from the book this to mean page 183 gallina said surely this idea of the birth of a male when the water of the male is higher and the birth of a female when the water of the female is higher is very reasonable but in any way this contradicts that the fact that sometimes baby females look like their fathers and also there are a few number of men who look like their mothers that's a problem because muhammad is assuming every time the baby look like the mamas are girls well i saw boys look like their mama and the boy look like their father i saw uh, the girls uh, look like their mama i see girls look like the daddy no kidding look around therefore it is best to say that female and male babies come as a result of when one of the waters goes above the other without conditions of detention and we must say that concerning different body characteristics so the two waters is not invention by allah or muhammad it was written years before muhammad uh, claimed to be a prophet before muhammad was a gleam in his father's eyes okay here we go so if they have sexual intercourse and the male substance chromosomes and genes prevails upon the female substance chromosomes and genes it is the male child that is created by Allah's decree. And when the substance of the female prevails upon the substance contributed by the male, a female child is formed by the decree of Allah. This is false information taken from false material. All material exists in Muhammad days. The stages of the fetus, according to uh, Claudius, uh, Glance, Glance, and the Quran. From the book Disamine, pages 93 through 95. Let us divide the creation of the fetus to four stages. First, which is seen when miscarriage or during the dissecting procedure, when it is still in the form of semen. Even the great Hippocrates did not call it a fetus. He still called it semen. But when it is filled with blood, heart, head, and liver, without details, without form, even though it has some hardness and a considerable size, and this is the second stage. As the material of the fetus looks like a piece of meat, and it is no longer looking like semen, the third stage comes, as we <clears> mentioned before, when we are able to see three parts clearly, and these wide steps for the body to all other parts. As for the fourth and last stage, that is when we see clearly all the extremities. The great Hippocrates did not call it fetus, but he named it a child. That is when he said, that is when the child moves, and shakes as he completes living growth. Four stages by uh, these uh, great uh, Greeks and Romans uh, uh, philosophers and uh, those who study and uh, investigate, uh, working with the lost baby. And, uh, you know, they were studying, opening, I guarantee you, maybe it's opening some animal's belly to examine the different stages. I mean, something you can <clears throat> do. Uh, by uh, by uh, observation, you see it, you feel it, you touch it, okay? But Muhammad was copying false information written hundreds of years before him, and Muslims tell me it's a miracle. It's not a miracle unless Muhammad come up with it. It's not a miracle unless if it's true. Copying false information does not make it a miracle. So here is the uh, the uh, the uh, the Greek or uh, the Roman philosophers or thinkers. They call it semen. Uh, Muhammad call it natfa. Uh, they call it blood and flesh. Muhammad call it cloth and uh, uh, madha. They call it uh, skeleton and and uh, and, and parts. And Muhammad call it bone and flesh. They call it uh, complete uh, baby. They call it another creature. It's the same. Muhammad was copying all the information. Sadly, many of it is wrong. With more studies they do, the more digging they do, they figure out better information. They correct the information, but we cannot correct the Quran because that's the word of Allah. That's a miracle of Islam. The miracle of all miracles in the Quran concerning the lengths of pregnancy. That itself is a miracle. That is itself an miracle. Listen to Professor Moore. The next stage is the al Hadana, al Rahimia. This uh, stage refers to the final stage of fetal development in the uterus when the fetus could survive if born prematurely, but it remains in the uterus where it is supported or nourished mm -hmm. by the mother. In most cases, therefore, uterus acts as an incubator for the premature infant 
Weight gain during these final weeks is phenomenal as the fetus accumulates fat and is gradually prepared for birth. This last uh, ayah is Surah Abasa, ayah 19 and 20. From a drop, he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term uh, means to make the passage easy. Let's skip the rest of the verse. And uh, <laughs> the uh, great uh, miracle of all, a Quran, uh, that is the uh, reliance of the traveler, the reliance of the traveler on uh, N9.5. N9.5, we learn from the reliance of the traveler, N9.5. The minimal duration of a pregnancy from which a live child is born is six months, while the maximum is four years. How do you like that, ladies? Having a baby, being pregnant for four years. I can talk about that later. A long story, and I'll tell you why the Quran and Muhammad taught that. But here's the last one. From the reliance of the traveler in 9.3. <clears throat> Whenever there is less than six months between two births, the babies are considered twins. How do you like that? <laughs> this is just uh, the modern day technology of Islam. The the uh, this what they call Muslim scholars. They actually are uh, doing a great job of uh, of uh, bringing this. By the way, I uh, saw a TV program, and I would like to give credit to uh, Brother Rashid. It is his uh, website, and he talked a lot. Some of this material I shared with you tonight come from his program uh, directly. Others, of course, I I worked hard and I. Uh, continuous material. So if you want to watch the Arabic program for those of you who would like to watch a similar study to mine, actually maybe half of mine or so to it is close to that uh, came from uh, Brother Rashid. Uh, so this is his links uh, to give him credit for the hard work he did. He did actually an interview with uh, an American doctor who uh, talked about all these slides and I called Brother Rashid and I asked him if he can send me <clears throat> that uh, video uh, in, the, uh, in the English language <clears throat> because I hate to translate He's already in English. He both in Arabic. I'm going to put it back to English. And uh, I have not got the video from him, but maybe in the future, Lord is willing, I will uh, be uh, doing this uh, uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, presentation another time with the new videos, which I look forward to get from uh, Brother Rashid in the future. Well, Brother Sam, my time is up. I'm finished. Praise God. Thank you for allowing me uh, to spend this time with you and our, our wonderful audience. And if there's any question, I would love to see. Where is the questions for tonight? Yeah, just to let you know, if you guys are wondering, I've been sitting on my couch letting him speak. So if you're wondering, why am I so comfortable? Why not? Because he's doing a lecture. Now, guys, just real quickly, this was a brand new presentation. And I'm saying this with all sincerity because a lot of us, we've been spoiled because our God is good. Jesus Christ is infinitely loving, compassionate, merciful. And he blesses us and loves us, even though we don't deserve it, especially me with my struggles, my failures, my sinful passions, and my doubts and fears. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on us. May the Lord Jesus save us from our own flesh and lack of faith. May he destroy our fears and doubts and belief because you, are, you guys are so blessed. I'm blessed. When I say you, I mean me. We live in a time because of technology. You got one of the best, if not the best. And I'm not saying it in front of him. This is the truth before the Lord. One of the best, if not the best, presentations in English on this gross scientific errors, blunders of the Quran. And what made this presentation so powerful, he backed it up from Muslim sources, hadiths from Muhammad, his companions, Muslim scholars. And the reason why you need to be thankful and praise Jesus Christ our Lord, it's now archived free of charge. He doesn't charge me to invite him. This is why I'm going to say this. It says, Proverbs 27, verse 2, let another man praise you. And I praise him for the glory of Jesus Christ because he is a soldier. He doesn't say how much to speak on your channel. And folks, I'm saying this. I'm going to remind you. There are Christians out there. They'll, they'll remain nameless, some of whom I know because I got it from reliable sources, that will not speak unless you give them a fee. I said that last time, I'm going to remind you. There are some people that demand $5,000 to $10,000 to come and speak at their church. This man doesn't charge a dime. He trusts the goodness of Jesus Christ to work through his people, to provide for his needs, because God called to ministry. 
what you got here is gold because now it's archived. The quotations are there. You can stop the video, write them down because Muslims like to lie and deceive us by saying these Arabic words mean this and they're compatible with science. He just destroyed that. He showed you hadiths from Muhammad, sound hadiths, his companions, Muslim sources. The words do not mean what today's Muslims say it means and they contradict modern science proving the Quran is a farce Muhammad is a false prophet and Allah is a false God. Praise Jesus Christ for him, for his ministry, for this work, and now we have it archived. So here's how you can bless this man. You pray for him, the Lord Jesus continue to give him long life, perfect health, him and his wife and his son, save them from satanic trials, and support him financially. I've said it last time, I'm going to say it again. There are ministries out there worth supporting, and there are other ministries that really... No one should support them, but I'm not going to mention them. You'll know them. God will make it clear to you. Now, there are some ministries that are worth supporting that are not fully funded. He's one of them. I highly encourage you to pray and see God's face. Lord, put in my heart who to give to, and he should be one of them. We want him fully supported. We want him fully funded. So he doesn't have to worry about where the next paycheck will come to pay my bills, my mortgage, or my rent, and take care of my wife. We need him in full-time ministry. And as you're praying for him, pray for me that the blood of Jesus will wash me, keep me pure, not be a hypocrite. The blood of Jesus wash my children. And the Lord Jesus will save me from my own satanic trials. I'm not finished yet. I need a miracle. Guys, really, I need a miracle. And I want you to keep two dates in mind. July 29th, August 12th. Pray for a miracle for those two days. Miraculous provision. And the Lord Jesus shows up miraculously for me and my daughters, because it can affect me in my ministry. So guys, please, July 29th, August 12th. With that said, you know his YouTube channel. You know his you know his Facebook. Not Facebook, I'm sorry, but you do have a Facebook. You know his website, get his Quran, and prayerfully consider supporting him on a monthly basis. That's what we want. I want him fully supported, because look at the stuff he gave you. Folks, I don't know Arabic. I'm dependent on him. He, did you hear what he said? He went to Muslim sites, translated the Arabic into English. You know, that takes time. That takes time. He has to read the Arabic, translate into English as accurately as possible. And that means time that he has to sacrifice from his own responsibilities to his wife and his son. You guys are blessed. And I, can, I have to say we're spoiled. Let's not take these blessings for granted. Let us show the Lord we're thankful by taking care of his servants. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Share all good things with the one who's teaching you. And this man is a soldier raised up by Jesus to destroy this cancer called Islam, to erase Muhammad by the power of Jesus Christ so Muslims get saved. Amen. Now, that's that. That's that. It's time for your questions. Who's got questions? I'm here in the channel. Give me your questions. If not, then you got, what, two hours of meat. Two hours of meat. Any questions? Let me see. Time to send them now. So remember, there's like a 10-second play. If not, then brother, hey, man, I mean, what you did was phenomenal. And I'm glad because now I can go back and look at the quotations and use them in my debates. You helped me. Thank you. you just made me a better debater. By the way, uh, Sam, if you remember, I came to you in Chicago one time to work with, this, with you on this presentation. And at this time, I did maybe half of it to do a debate with a, a gentleman. Remember the deceiver who called me, who pretended to be a man who want to learn about Islam because his daughter is uh, uh, coming to meet with uh, some guys. He wanted me to debate them, and we found out who is this guy later. Yeah. And I will have half of this presentation. And since then, I left it until I talked to you. Uh, I mentioned last week. So all this week, I was working it to finish it, and praise God, I think it's going to be a powerful presentation. Uh, my, uh, uh, Sam, I'm telling you, honestly, I'm not saying in front of you, this was one of the best presentations. Thank you me. destroyed it because Thank you gave – see, what makes your presentation beautiful? You quoted Muslim sources that we don't have access to. See, I got I don't have time to re learn Arabic. I may be able to pick it up. I'm going to be 48 years old. I can use that time to keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't want to spend years. We got the experts. Usama, his mother tongue is Arabic. CP, Christian Prince. And you know one advantage that Usama has? Our brother, Christian Prince, his English is not the best, he'll tell you. So when he writes... Sometimes his writing is not as clear. There's a lot of meat. Usama 
his English is very clear. So when he translates, it's clear. So we need this brother in ministry. Guys, we need him. We're going to put, again, the links in the description box. We need this brother in ministry. I'm telling you, if we if this man has to stop ministry because of financial reasons, I will be heartbroken. I love this man. I love his family. And he's one man I want to see doing ministry until Jesus comes or takes him home. Amen. But some, I think you rocked everyone because no one's got questions. You rocked everybody. <laughs> Well, that's okay. Uh, I, I, I mean, I would love to hear some question because that will. I love question because in question I get challenged, and that make me study more and learn more. If everybody just listen what I got and I never learn anything from your audience, I mean I'm missing the interaction. I love to have, yeah. and as I always say, it's not because we said, "Hey, give us your questions." That means we know the answer. I, no. I, I'm always ready to learn more. So if if somebody have a question, I don't have the answer. Well, praise God. That means. Tomorrow or maybe tonight before I go to bed, I'm going to search for the answer, which means I'm going to grow. And it would mean soon you will have the answer by email or by uh, another video. You never know. Amen. By the way, I, I didn't mention in the pre previous two sessions, but he does a weekly blog talk radio show on Jihad every Saturday. You still do that, brother? Yeah. It's been uh, seven, 18 years now. 18 Folk, years. You, you can hear oh, him. No, no, no. Saturday. Saturday. That radio program is only when uh, when Obama came to power. So Obama seven years plus uh, four, maybe around uh, eleven years. Yeah, eleven years. I apologize. So, folks, every Saturday we're gonna put the link too on Blog Talk Radio. Usama Doktok has a Saturday live show every Saturday. Every nine, Saturday. To Central. nine to eleven Central. Yeah. Nine, but what, what state is that? I mean, what is it? Yes. Nine Central. Ten o'clock. Central standard. I'm in these time zones. Brother, you move someone to tears. Prophet Google says, I'm in tears. He says, I'm in tears. You're going to make me cry too. I want to say from my heart, there are no questions, Osama. You bless them. I really won't mean this from my heart. The Lord knows I'm not lying. It's from my heart. I love this man. He is a warrior. He's a soldier. I honestly can tell you, I've seen this man when he's not in front of the camera teaching. I've seen him outside. He is one of the most humble servants of Jesus. And I mean this when I say, I ask the Lord Jesus, Lord, give me the grace and humbleness, humility, and purity that you've given this man so I can delight your heart. This man is the real deal, folks. He's the real deal. He's not a joke. So please, for the sake of Jesus, and if you've trust me in being a servant to give you solid facts, trust my, my <clears throat> judgment when I say, this man is worthy of your support. I wish I could tell you who not to support, but I'm going to look like a jerk. But he's one of the ones to support. And God, I'm going to try to bring him on more often as the schedule allows. So, guys, I see there's no questions. You're blessed. So pray for him. We're going to put the links in the description box. Consider supporting him on a monthly basis. See, let me tell you how ministry works. Ministry survives by the grace of God when enough people give small amounts regularly but a large number in other words it's better for a ministry to have 100 people giving 50 dollars than a person giving a one-time gift of a thousand don't get me wrong that's that's a blessing but when you have regular people giving then you know that income is coming in so if he has let's say 100 giving 50 right every month on his patron then he knows okay i know that's coming in because i have these people committed that's how ministries work guys i don't know if you know that large number a large number of people giving what they can, and it doesn't have to be 100, 200, $10. Here, 10 times 100 is what? 1,000. If you have 100 people giving 10, that's 1,000. If you have 100 giving 20, that's 2,000. If you have 100, see, that's how it works regularly, and then they, we can know, he can know, all right, God is taking care of my bills through his people. I can just focus on research, writing, and translating, and teaching. So do support this man. I love this man. Thank and you. I'll tell you something. Let me tell you something, guys. You're, you are blessed to live in this time. Not only the Internet is now spreading the gospel like wildfire, millions of Muslims in the comfort of their home hearing the gospel, first time in human history. But during this time, you are living in the midst of giants of the faith. Usama is a giant. He's a man among men. So is Christian Prince. So is David Wood. Even though I banter with him, that's another soldier, man. You guys are so blessed to live in these times. So we love you, Osama. Thank you. And I will make sure as long as God gives me health and breath and keeps me in love with him pure, I will always do what I can to serve you and get you supported. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot.
God bless Just you, do me a favor, someone. Pray yeah. for my miracle. You know my situation and my daughters. God save me and keep me free to glorify him. Amen. We love you. And brethren, he loves you. And by the way, go to Operation Apologetics, the YouTube channel, Operation Apologetics. He's inviting me on. In an hour and a half now, now I'm going live with him. Op Operation Apologetics. Go to that channel. Within an hour, hour and a half, I'll be live with him, God willing. So go there. He's going to announce it. And I'm going to have him back within a week or so. It's up to him. We'll see. Uh, we'll get... Anytime. Anytime, Sam. We love you, brother. We love, love you, me. and we love you guys. And Jesus loves you and loves us. May the blood of Jesus wash us and save us, especially from my moral failures, to be holy unto the Lord. Amen. And give us the grace to finish the race with honor and integrity. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God Amen. bless you guys. Take care. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it, Sam.